How to see if your crush likes you back. Step one, fake your death by opening Photoshop and make a death certificate and then send it to Instagram. Then they will think you have passed and will make your account a memorial account. Step two, now that people think you have passed, you have to go into hiding while you wait for people's reactions. The best way to do this is live in a dumpster behind Taco Bell and feed off the food scraps. Step three, check the comments on your recent post 48 hours later. By now, your crush will have commented their true feelings. Honestly, Benjamin, you were the most uh, obnoxious person I ever met, and you said I looked like a swamp toad, and I hope you burn in the pits of hell. Make sure to follow for more life hacks. Hello, oh, I spent a week in Japan only eating out of vending machines, and I ate stuff like fish in a bottle. Uh, let's try it. You are technically only supposed to drink the soup around it, but I wanted to free Little Nemo. But you have to break the bottle open, and the soup was all right. But I was more invested in sending Little Buddy back to his home. Just kidding, he clogged my toilet, and I can't poop. Next, I went to a bread vending machine, where you could get this bread in a can. This is great if you've ever had the intrusive thought to eat the insulation out of your walls. Next was a banana vending machine, which is just bananas. <laughs> oh, fuck. Next, I got this vitamin C drink, which tasted good, but turned my pee green, and the cap got stuck to my finger, and I had to pry it off before it turned purple. But then I found an edible bug vending machine. So I bought a pack for $14, even though they live in my bed for free, and surprise, surprise, they were nasty. But as I ate them, this man walked in on me eating bugs outside his restaurant. Um, and I am too scared to ever go back to Japan. Hey y'all, I'm currently in the vegan teacher's basement, so I thought I'd give you a house tour. Here's a dining room table. It has don't eat cats painted on it. Um, just a reminder if you're gonna do that today. Here are two fly swatters, which um, I don't know if you can have that as a vegan, but whatever. Upstairs is the studio. Uh, that's her exercise bike. She also streams here by putting her phone on a tripod, which is a wooden block from Home Depot with three nails in it. And this is her schedule, which starts at 5 in the morning to wake up and eat blueberries and chia seeds. Anyways, kitchen tour! This is me, by the way. This horse, um, the horse's name was Ben. Doesn't mean I want to ride you, though. Oh. <laughs> her fridge has, like, 4,000, uh, vegetables and, uh, a pepperoni stick, which is really interesting. Um, don't ask any questions about it, otherwise... Actually, stop filming for a second. Okay. Anyways, welcome to the backyard. Here's some uh, propaganda and military-grade security systems that fire tactical rounds if it sees you eating meat. And that's the tour of the happy vegan home that I'm so happy to be in the basement of. <laughs> So I bought this doggy camera to spy on my little worm creature, and when I was checking the cameras today, I saw that when she comes through her doggy door, a literal rat has been following her in. And not only that, I caught them canoodling, and I had to shoot a tree to her to break them up so I could go rescue her from Remy the Rat and my house not paying rent. Anyways, I was horrified, and ever since, she's been giving me, uh, rabies vibes, the way she's been kind of foaming at the mouth and trying to bite me. So I took her to a discount vet clinic at the back of a dollar store, and they weighed her little fat butt and then put her on the table. And I told them I think she has rabies, and that's when they pulled out three humongous needles. And then they took her into the back rooms, and I'm not an anti-vaxxer or anything, but she was screaming so much, I was like, bring my girl back! And I grabbed her and brought her home, and now she just has a little bit of rabies, but it's fine, because she just likes to give me love bites. Uh <laughs> Today, I threw away all my electronics so I could join the Amish and live a simple life. But after about 10 minutes, I got really bored of harvesting wheat and apples and wanted to watch a good old YouTube video. But I didn't have any devices to watch YouTube on, so I obviously walked over to the YouTube headquarters. And when I got there, I managed to walk right in and I found an empty room with a TV in it so I could watch a few videos from my personal collection. Anyways, after I had cured my boredom, I left the room and raided the YouTube fruit counter and grabbed an orange and an apple and a DVD copy of the video. I watched. But when I finally got home, I realized I can't play this because I don't have a record player. <laughs> but I looked around my room and saw an old radio speaker thing and popped the CD in it just so I could listen to the audio and imagine the video in my mind. But when it started playing, it sounded like it was coming from outside my house and that's when I realized I had it sent to broadcast. And I ran outside to see every radio in the vicinity was playing. <laughs> Today, I spent nine hours painting Doja Cat, and it turned out so good that I decided to DM it to her. And she actually replied by saying, it's terrific. And I was just in disbelief that she replied, so I screenshotted it as fast as I could and posted it on my story to show all my friends. But after she saw it, she DM'd me a picture of the front of my house and my birth certificate. And when I said, yeah, yes, it is Doja Cat, <laughs> I saw she mentioned me in her story. And, and when I looked, she had posted both of those images on her story. And, and I was like, Doja, why would you do that? And then she went live and was very angry at me. And the next thing I knew there were people banging on my front door and then one of them threw something through my window and I had no clue what it is so I slowly approached it but when I got too close it started to fill my room with gas and I heard on her live stream and she said careful of the tear gas beep beep gas beep beep 
So I grabbed what I could and ran out of my house and saw a flyer on the telephone pole for witness protection. And I called them and had to throw away my passport and credit cards. And now I'm flying to New Zealand to start a new life. Thanks, Doja Cat. Today, I snuck an AirTag tracking device into an Ed Sheeran concert so that I could somehow stick it onto him to track him down because that's for the FBI. No. Anyways, randomly, BTS opened for him and then Eddie was about to come on stage. So I had the genius idea to use an extra mask and fashion it into a slingshot so that when he performed, I walked up to the front of the stage, locked onto my target, and bam, it flew through the air. And now I know there's no way of it sticking to him. However, they have to pack up the stage and it's probably going to travel with him. So anyways, I saw Doja Cat and Lil Nas X and then left the concert concert and went home. Then the next morning, I was getting a reading on the AirTag Finder, and it said that he was in Las Vegas. So I flew to Las Vegas, and when I got to the airport, I thought I had already found him, but the thing is, I had a little bit of spicy grape juice on the plane. So I stumbled over to the man and shouted, Ed! And it was just a random man. So, um, yeah. I was scrolling through Tinder because the last person I met was when I was at the Apple store and came across some girl's number that she left on an iPad. So I took it and went home and tried texting it and just said hi. And then she replied asking if she could come over for some eggplant. And I panicked because I've never cooked eggplant before. But I remembered I could make eggplant parmesan. So I was looking for recipes on Google when I realized I actually typed in eggplant permission. Anyways, she said she was 30 minutes away and I ended up running to the grocery store to buy some eggplant. So I grabbed some eggplants and then I needed the parmesan. So I went up to this giant wheel of parmesan they had but i couldn't lift it so i just got a little piece anyways i went home and chopped up the eggplant and dropped some on the ground but i used the five minute rule because i'm half white and i put it in the pan and then i added some cheese and was gonna bake it when i found a spider in my oven so i baked that instead until he was nice and crispy and then i threw the eggplant in and it was finally ready so i sent her a picture of the eggplant parmesan and said you ready for this eggplant but then all of a sudden my texts to her were green and i heard tires screeching outside anyways now i'm back on tinder so if anyone wants a serving of eggplant parmesan make sure you match with so I have a chunk of dry ice from buying human organs off the black market, but I was thinking, how do you even get rid of dry ice? Like, it doesn't melt, because it's literally frozen air, and it repels water, which means it's homophobic. Oh wait, I mean hydrophobic. Anyways, I'm clinically stupid, so I broke a piece in half and plopped it in my toilet to see what would happen. And was making these fun little bubbles, so I filled the bathtub and grabbed the rest of it and threw it in some water to see what would happen. And anyways, that was a mistake, because it filled the whole shower up with gases, and I remembered it's not frozen air, it's frozen CO2, and I was getting lightheaded, and I wasn't trying die. So I took the piece out and I brought it to the sink and I jammed it down the drain as best as I could so it would go away. And then I took a deep breath of relief until I looked down to see I was standing in a puddle of water and boom, my pipes exploded. There was water spraying me everywhere in the face and got everywhere. Anyways, uh, I may have caused a catastrophic water main failure in my whole neighborhood and flooded 102 buildings. So, um, I don't think the vegan chicken nuggets were worth I recently mentioned that I have a chunk of dry ice from buying human organs off of the black market and the TikTok blew up, which is not what I wanted because now the FBI is gonna be on my ass because this morning I was watching how snails make love when my MacBook camera turned on and usually it's just my FBI agent checking in to see if I'm doing okay mentally but this time they messaged me and said, did you really buy human organs off of the- and I said, no you dumb one that brain doo-doo head, it's a TikTok, when have I ever made a serious TikTok? It's all just a joke because I'm painfully bored with too much time on my hands and I just write down whatever comes to my brain and somehow people enjoy it, it makes me really happy but then I read one hate comment and it ruins my whole week. And then my FBI agent told me, go to therapy. And I was like, damn, you're right. And I went to bed. Don't buy organs on the black market or your FBI agent will make you go to therapy. I was making sushi with raw chicken instead of raw fish, but I accidentally dropped it on the floor. And when I bent over to pick it up, I saw my legs and wondered if I could wax them so they would feel like two slippery hot dogs. So I canceled my chicken sushi, and once I was done cleaning it all up, I went to my garage to find a bottle of Gorilla Glue to wax my legs. But here's the big old catch. I can't make a single noise waxing my legs, because if I wake up my dog, she will literally pee herself in the beanbag chair. So with that in mind, I grabbed some plastic wrap and put the glue on it and made a little waxing strip. Then I knelt down and put the strip on slowly, and at first I was like, this isn't too bad. It just kind of feels kind of numb. And then it started burning and I realized I had to do it now so I ripped it off and it didn't get the wax off ah! I panicked and I tried to wipe it off but it just shredded the paper towel got even stickier and also my dog woke up and peed herself <laughs> but at least the sushi was kind of fine I was picking the ticks out of my dog's fur so I could collect them and inject them with acid until they pop but just before I could even get to doing that, my phone went off. And when I checked it, my friends had invited me to go rollerblading with them. So I dropped what I was doing and I met them at the roller derby ring. Now I paid $10 to rent some skates, but listen, these babies were impossible to put on. And when I stood up, it felt like I had fettuccine noodles for legs. But it was actually really fun, except there was a small child who kept trying to chase me and I'm allergic to small children. So I tried to avoid him at all costs. But then he got too close to me and I ran him over. And in the distance, I heard some lady who I think was his mom screaming at me about her little overgrown feet. I want the camera! So 
So I left the roller rink and escaped into the mall, but I could still hear her screaming in the distance. So I started running. And then that's when I saw a security guard and told him that there was a psychopath chasing me. And thankfully he snuck me out of the mall. And um, turns out she got arrested later for biting an employee. So. <laughs> Okay, so I found some weird Tic Tac looking things in the bathroom that weren't mine. And I was pretty bored, so I ate them all. And I felt like I was in the show Euphoria. Stranger. But I thought they would be tropical fruit flavored. But they were very much not. And I started wondering what they actually are. And I looked in the drawer where I found them and they were growth capsules. I was confused, but I got super excited because I want to be eight feet tall and stomp on all the people that walk slow. And just tower over everyone stomping on it. Oh, wait, they're actually um foam animal pills that grow in water. I started freaking out because I can barely digest Taco Bell. So I don't think I can digest that. And I grabbed a bunch and put them in water to see what animal was growing inside me. And when I pulled the foam out and looked at the diagram, uh, it was a horse! And you know what? I embraced it. I became my true calling of a horse boy. And I put on my four shoes on all four of my hoofs. And then I played every horse's favorite song right now. And I ran off into the world to start a new life. Today, I hiked up to the Hollywood sign, but there was a fence blocking access to it. So I committed a little bit of a crime. And I managed to get through, and I changed the sign to Holly Boo by covering the W with a B for a boo. Anyways, I was walking down, and I saw helicopters flying overhead, and I was getting kind of nervous. So I ran into the bushes, and I hid from them, because apparently I was on government property. Or whatever that means. Anyways, I got an emergency alert on my phone, and when I checked, it said that there was a $2 million bounty for a six-foot man in green. So I realized I'll have to live off the grid forever in these bushes, with my only food being Lady Gaga Oreos that I brought as a snack. Anyways, I managed to sneak away to a swamp, but I heard the choppers getting closer. But that's when I looked in the distance and saw none other than a six foot man in green in the swamp. I had to act fast, so I grabbed my phone and I dialed 911 and I ratted on Shrek. Anyways, Shrek was arrested and charged with eight felonies and I got a two million dollar reward. So now I'm rich and I bought a mansion. Thanks, Shrek. So I've been waiting for this day for a month now. That's because today is the delivery day for my brand new iPhone 12 Pro Max. 500, oh, Shrek, iPhone 12 Pro Max, 512 gigabytes Pacific Blue. Color. And yeah, it was $2,000, but it's got really good speakers, so I bring it in the shower, and it's really fun to just- ah! oh, no. Oh, no. Hey guys, so actually now I have an Android, um, it was all I could afford after paying $2,000 just to break my iPhone, but, um, it's really fun! It um, what are those monstrosities? Absolutely not! Hey guys, so now I'm using the Vizio Smart TV that I found behind a dumpster after walking through a local junkyard. And the screen is really big, but that's okay, because it's great for watching TikToks, and I really love- Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Oh, no. So now I'm coming to you live from my brand new Sunbeam Ultra Crisp 2-in-1 toaster, and it's actually kind of better than the Android. But, uh, the phone disconnected again. Let me fix that real quick. Oh, no. Hey guys, so I'm actually coming to you live from hell now, where I'm currently burning. Today, I made a New Year's resolution to stop filling up my gas car with diesel just because it's cheaper. Because last time I did that, it started smoking when I was driving back from the gas station and then eventually burst into flames. So I've actually failed my first New Year's resolution because now I have no car to fill up with gas and it's 40 grand to repair the garage from fire damage. But I can't go to the bank because I don't have a car. So I walked in minus 40 degree weather to the car store and bought an electric car with all the money I made selling human organs off the black market. And it's really cute and it looks like a ladybug and I drove it home and found out I can plug get in with the same charger as my phone. So I grabbed my dog and we went on a little mini road trip for about 47 minutes when my car died because apparently you can't charge a car with a phone charger. So now I'm stranded in the middle of nowhere, genuinely considering eating my Cheez-Its that I brought as a snack while I wait for the tow truck to come, obviously. Today, my Mima told me that she bought an NFT, and I was like, Mima, you just asked me if Mark Zuckerberg was my girlfriend. How do you know what an NFT is? So anyways, I was using one of those head massagers when I got a knock at the door, and when I answered, no one was there except for a box with a towel in it and some noodles with a note that said, NFT, noodly fun towel. And it wasn't even fun, it was soaking wet in some mysterious liquid. And I was about to put it away in my closet when I got the idea that I could actually make it into an NFT and get some use out of it. So I made some room and I took a picture of it and made it look all pretty and I minted it on Bubble House and made it free for a limited time. And I emailed her back and told her to go claim one before they're all gone. And even her bingo club can get one and even you. And we can play bingo together on Bubble House with my Mima and her bingo group. 
I was scrolling through the deep web when I saw an ad for a GoFundMe to get the queen an air fryer before she dies. So I went to it and saw no one had donated. So I gave her $5 and went to bed. But when I woke up the next morning, I got an email that it was shut down by GoFundMe. And I knew the queen still needs an air fryer. So I packed my bags and went to the airport to book the next flight to London to bring her an air fryer that I bought for her. And after 10 hours, I landed and Ben was in the Big Ben. So I took the train to the Buckingham Palace where she lives. But when I got there, they had it gated off and I couldn't go in to see the queen. So I found another entrance with a flimsy little fence that I slid under and then I popped over another fence but that triggered an alarm. So I was running as fast as I could and I happened to drop the air fryer but I had to hide so I managed to find the queen's quarters and snuck in and I thought I was safe until... <laughs> I woke up on some cliffs, on an island with nothing but a note on my arm that said, Please, they won't let me air fry. Elizabeth, I will save you. Today I made a DIY North Korean driver's license by taking a picture with my iPad, and then I googled North Korean IDs and slapped my face on it. And I made it look all pretty by crossing this guy's name off and giving myself a fake name. But I didn't do this so I can get into a club or anything. I did it so that every day I can print a new one and change my birthday to today's date so I can get free stuff every single day like a Starbucks drink or make people be nice to me. Anyways, I first tested my ID at Olive Garden and the waiter got the whole restaurant singing happy birthday to me. But more importantly, I got a big old cannoli for free, baby. Anyways, next I went to Cheesecake Factory and I showed my waitress my ID thinking she would give me, I don't know, a cheesecake slice at Cheesecake Factory. But when she came to the table, she had all these cheesecake slices and what did she give me? A bowl of berries. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess. But then she dropped the bill off and charged me $8 for the strawberries. When all I wanted was a slice of cheesecake for free because they were like $10. So basically fake uh, North Korean IDs don't work at Cheesecake Factory. Today I walked to Starbucks to get the brand new Ariana Grande drink. Because the Travis Scott meal suck fat buttholes. So I'm curious to see what Ariana drinks. I finally got there and when I ordered, I said, I'd like the grande, please. And they were like, the grande what? And I said, the grande. And they were like, the grande what? And then I said, the Ariana Grande. And then they said, okay, that'll be $69.69. And I was shocked at how expensive it was, but I paid. And they brought my drink out and I waited until I was home to drink it. And when I was finally ready, I uncovered my eyes to look at it and it was just a grande cup with a bug in it. And I screamed out of horror and I grabbed the cup and I ran to the street to dispose of it and I winded up my throw and I watched as it flew through the air and then came crashing down and I watched as the Ariana Grande drink bled across the pavement with the bug's life flashing before its eyes. So overall, I would rate the Ariana Grande drink at Starbucks a 3 out of 10. I accidentally swallowed the bug and it started feasting on my internal organs. I don't know if you remember, but five years ago today, Harambe the gorilla was D-worded. So I decided to take a quick trip to infiltrate the Cincinnati Zoo, because I think he might still be alive and the whole thing was a publicity stunt. Anyways, when I got there, I did a bird call to attract some birds to land on me as a disguise, and it worked. A bunch of gay chickens landed on me and I had the perfect disguise. I was walking around looking like a zoo employee, which let me sneak into the employees only area with no suspicion. I was walking around in the back rooms when I tried saying hi to the employees, but they were busy cleaning fish doogie, so I stopped to pet some stingrays because I couldn't find Harambe's enclosure and then I pet some sharks and they were so cool just like a little bit slimy and then I saw some jellyfish and they're so pretty so I reached in to pet where am I? the place you go when you pet a jellyfish stupid oh well let me see Today I was in my car when I saw that the Amish were doing a pop-up shop, so obviously I had to go check it out because I don't believe that they're real. And when I pulled up to Simply Amish, I put my mask on because I don't want to give the entire colony the plague or something. And when I walked in, the employee was on a computer, and I was like, that's strange, they're not even supposed to have electricity. But I was walking around, and at first it seemed like a really expensive furniture store, and I was like, damn, these Amish are gonna be balling. But then I came across this door that was half open, which led to this scary basement that had all of these artifacts and and paintings of Jesus, and then randomly a Rick and Morty Chia pet, and some cards that I don't think are Amish appropriate, and then a Queen's Gambit board game, which- oh. <laughs> Wouldn't that just be chess? Anyways, I felt the need to buy something so the Amish don't steal my organs. I got one of those popping toys where you put it on the ground and... Anyways, when I paid and got the bag, I noticed they slipped a key in it with a note saying, Need escape? And then some coordinates, which I looked up online and found that they lead to their colony. So I think they tried recruiting me and let me know if I should drive up there and join. I can only fall asleep to loud noises, so tonight I played some mukbang videos on full volume. And I also tried blasting that one girl who goes, ah, in all of her songs, and I was about to go to sleep like a baby when I heard a banging at my door, and I realized it was probably my insane neighbor who was literally named Karen. But when I got up and put clothes on and walked down to the door, there was nothing but an envelope that said, use these. So I brought it inside and opened it up, and she had sent me her nasty, crusty, earwax-covered AirPods that smelled like Fritos. And at first I was like, this is a human rights violation, and I'm probably diseased now. 
until I saw the opportunity to suit up in a hazmat suit and rinse the brain caca off of them so that they look new, and then I could sell them to someone in my neighborhood for a profit. So I made a listing for like $150, and this one dude said he would buy it if I could meet him by the nuclear waste runoff. So I Ubered over there, and when I got there, I saw a bunch of money just sitting under some leaves, and I was like, that's not the safest way to do a transaction, but regardless, I just sprinkled the AirPods by it and then went home with $150 in like four different currencies. But it's okay, because I just ordered a bass boosted speaker with the money from the AirPods. And when it comes, I'm gonna have a big old party and blast music with a speaker courtesy of Carrie. Last night I went to Chuck E. Cheese to lie and say it's my birthday to get free pizza. And it worked, baby! But the place was terrifying and the food was even scarier. And after a few bites, I started feeling sick like I had worms in my stomach. So I got up and I stumbled out of the restaurant and I went home. Then the next day, I scheduled an emergency Zoom doctor's visit and he told me that I'm lactose intolerant. And I was like, what the hell? I don't lactose, I got all 10, baby! But then he told me to put my feet away and I was like, you're right, you should be paying me for this, not the other way around, buddy. And then he started telling me, you can't eat pizza anymore. But his video started to cut out, but it's okay, because I know what lactose intolerance is. I can't have bread anymore! So I got rid of all my bread and dumped all of that fart food right in the trash. And then I grabbed some milk and chugged nothing but pure milk for a few days. And you know what? It was really good for a bit until I started feeling a storm brewing ten times stronger than what Chuck E. Cheese did to me. So I immediately ran to the bathroom and... So apparently lactose intolerance is the milk one, but at least I don't lactose, baby! Ever since Trump got banned off of every social media platform, <laughs> I actually discovered the last way that he's been able to whine to his little Trump stands since he can't be on Twitter anymore. And you're probably wondering, what is it? Well, last January, my number got leaked online and someone took my number and gave it to the Trump campaign. So they've been sending me nonstop texts, emails, and calling me like once a week. Oh, to support Donald Trump. And wherever they call me, I, um... <laughs> politely decline. Anyway, since he's been banned, it's been real quiet. Until one day, I was drinking Red Bull out of my frog mug on the balcony when a piece of paper hit me in the head from the sky and I saw a carrier pigeon flying away. Anyways, I looked at the note and it was a note from Trump himself saying he's bored and losing his job and needs $50. <laughs> you know what I did? I went looking for the perfect pigeon to send back to the President of the United States and I found a strong young pigeon with just a dash of rabies. I showed it a picture of Trump, pointed it in the direction of the White House, and I said, fly, baby, fly. Today I went to the fair so I could try and go on that tilt-a-whirl ride that was about to collapse in this TikTok that I saw. But when we were standing in line for it, I noticed some sparks fly as it flew by. And a literal screw had been sharded out. And I was like, well, the Juice World concert's gonna be really good after this. Anyways, we got on and found our seats and put the thing on. And I don't know what they did, but they had cranked that speed up to the max. And you know what? It surprisingly didn't fall apart, but instead I just passed out like a little infant that can't stay awake. Anyways, I got off and was feeling kind of hungry. And I saw the cotton candy booth, so I went over to it. And they gave some to us for free because they were so nice. And I was enjoying my cotton candy when my friends dragged me onto this swingy thingy. So I reluctantly gave the dude my ticket and found my seat. And once it started moving, I realized that cotton candy and motion sickness is a terrible mix. They were swinging our butts around this thing like no tomorrow, baby. Because I threw up. And it sprayed on a worker. And I'm never allowed. I was joining some random Zoom calls today so I could make some friends. But after accidentally joining an Amish call in the Zoom, I accidentally joined the Zoom call with this guy in it. And I was like, who's that? Until I realized I had joined a call with Dr. Fauci, the chief medical advisor to the president. And then I looked in the mirror to make sure I didn't look like a cockroach. And then as soon as I looked presentable, I grabbed my laptop and brought it out to the living room. And then I joined the call and I was like, how are you, Dr. Fauci? And he said, I'm good, Ben. Nice to be with you. How you doing? And then I froze and tried to think of like a question about COVID or something. And that's when I remembered my uncle texting me out of the blue saying that there's pee in the vaccine so i was like let me set the record straight so i asked him the vaccine looks like it's just a few drops of water and i feel like a lot of people don't really know what's actually going on in there what vaccine did you get ben i have moderna i got moderna too so okay what, so when you and i got injected what happened it went into the muscle the body recognizes the protein of that virus and neutralizes it. I feel like that was like a, a crash course and a PhD in biology, but <laughs> it all made sense. I, I figured it out. Well, you heard it from the White House and better the week. The vaccines are safe. Go get it, please. So TikTok sent me a skateboard and I decided to ride it down my stairs so I could see a Juice World concert. And you're probably wondering, how did I get one? And it's cause I used my Russian hacking skills to make me the most followed person by changing my follow count from 6.7 M to a B. M to the B, M to the B, M to the B. Anyways, what the frick, it didn't come with wheels. And I was like, what the heck? I was supposed to hang it on my wall, but I have trauma from last week when my stop sign fell off my wall and almost chopped me up in a cooked sashimi. So I decided maybe I can ride it down the stairs, but I don't want to meet Michael Jackson. Wait, never mind. Michael Jackson's in hell. <laughs> So I put on my frog costume from Halloween, but not only is it a frog costume, it's an inflatable frog costume. So I started at the top of my stairs and I slowly nudged myself forward until I wrote it down and... So 
anyways, now the board is snapped in half, but I got this cool new brew, so if anyone could give it a fun name, that would be greatly appreciated. So I was completely legally watching a movie today when I won an iPhone 13. And all I had to do was enter my social security number. So I typed it in. And then a week later, while I was blending my candles together to make a mega candle, I got a notification that a package was delivered. So I ran downstairs to grab it, and the packaging was a little strange, but I cracked open the box, which apparently was for the iPhone 14. And then when I opened up that box, they had sent me a toy car. And I was like, I know I didn't just give away my identity for a Hot Wheel. And then I realized it's actually a phone. So I decided to hang up on the 911 one operator that I had panic called and I checked out my new phone and it was pretty cool until I realized it was a used phone and I think the previous owner was someone's grandma because I saw in her text she wasn't just having booty calls but a whole booty conference now I didn't want this phone anymore after going into the images and seeing granny's milkies so I picked it up one last time and checked her contact section and noticed she had her address on there so I grabbed the phone and biked over to her house which happened to be only an hour away and when I got there um granny is on her Jeff Bezos those type B. So I decided to put my name in her contacts and then I threw the phone over the fence and I'll let you know if I slide. I was so excited today to see Harry Styles in that new movie that he's in today. So I went to the theater and snuck in my own snacks because a hot dog is $12, but a pea and ketchup sandwich is too. But as I was enjoying, enjoying my delicious meal, um, they flashed an ad for like three seconds saying, bring, bring blood, blood to bathroom stall four. And I looked around the theater and like, no one was phased by this. So I, I sat through the movie, but Harry Styles wasn't the only thing making me feel curious. So I left as I as the credits rolled and I went to the bathroom and I didn't think anyone was in there, but I, um, I found stall number four and I went in and locked the door behind me and, uh, there was this, there, there was a guy asking for the blood, I guess, and um, I wasn't about to give him my, my blood, but I remembered that I had my ketchup still, so I poured some on a piece of toilet paper, and I, and I handed it to him, and it turns out the guy in the stall was actually just out of toilet paper and needed some, and I don't know what the cold stuff was about, but, but I'm now about to be murdered. Hey! on New Year's Eve when we were all excited for 2020 to start and then World War II almost started and we were like okay that's the worst thing that's gonna happen this year and then Australia walked in and said you know what I am gonna light on fire and then immediately after that we lost Kobe and we're like okay that's enough for this year but it wasn't because then someone coughed and the next thing you know six million people were coughing and then anything that ever brought anyone joy was canceled and then after that we're like okay this is too much I would like to go to bed for the rest of the year and then boom murder hornets arrive in North America oh what's that that's just NASA discovering alternate universes that apparently exist now and that thing in the sky oh yeah that's an asteroid that almost wiped out humanity which at this point wouldn't be a bad thing oh yeah the government also confirmed that they found UFOs you know as a little treat and the year isn't even done yet. It's literally June. Like, what's gonna happen now? <laughs> if you want to see my accurate prediction of what's gonna happen the rest of the year, the link to the YouTube videos in my bio. I keep seeing "wap this, wap that," but I didn't know what it meant. So I texted my grandma, and she said it stands for "we all pray," and I thought that's so wholesome. And there's a dance to it too. So I was learning the dance in my bedroom when I accidentally bonked my head on the floor and gave myself a nosebleed. And as I looked in the mirror, I realized I'm 11 from Stranger Things' his older brother, 20. I tried testing out my powers, and I made a tic tac levitate. And then I tried to lift the humongous weight on my shoulders of living with the world's number one biggest, fattest, juiciest. But, uh, anyways, it didn't work. But now that I have powers, I teleported myself to the aquarium, specifically the frog section, and I used my powers to smuggle some frogs out of there. And my backpack was full of frogs, but the security guard caught me, and I didn't have enough money to bail myself out, so I started making merch from prison with the frog babies that were taken away from me. And now, the merch is officially out. I designed it myself, and 30% of the proceeds are going to charity. So yeah, come bail me out of frog prison. We got phone cases. Hey, no phones in prison! <laughs> Never mind. This morning, I woke up and could feel the jumbo-sized bag of mini eggs that I ate the night before rumbling in my stomach and i decided today i'm gonna see how far i can physically run until i pass out so i made some shrek toast for breakfast and i put on my running outfit and then i hit the street i started running and quickly realized that i have to pass chipotle and kfc and subway and they all smell so good but i ignored it and i saw a place selling Berry. And then I saw the river and I wanted to swim in it, but I saw a rat floating on a turd, so maybe not. Then I ran under a bridge and got yelled at and it was very frightening. And I passed a dance lessons place, but it's apparently pole dancing, but like I can do that too. Ah. Then I saw the world's biggest bird poop. Like I think a pterodactyl had to do that. What in the world? Then I passed more food and there was a sign that was so complicated. And then, ooh, an avocado truck. And I chased the avocado truck because I wanted one. And then it was about to hit me. And ah. Then I realized I had hallucinated that and I was actually severely dehydrated. And I felt like I was going to pass out. And the mountain was like right there, but I couldn't do 
knew it. So I called an Uber. And when he arrived, I got in. But I was so weak that I passed out. When I woke up, I realized I accidentally ordered it to Guatemala. So, hola, estoy varado en un pe Hi, my name's Ben. I'm 20, and I've never swallowed a pill in my entire life. Because they made me throw up. But I'm anemic, and I need pills or I'll pass out. And so far, I've just been chewing my iron pills, but they taste like an iPhone 5 battery. So today, I'm gonna learn how to swallow pills. Now, I don't have any actual pills, so I drove to 7-Eleven and got some Tic Tacs. So welcome to me making a Tic Tac about swallowing Tic Tacs for TikTok. Now that I had some Tic Tacs, I went to an abandoned street to practice swallowing them because I don't want to throw up on my floor. And it went like this. <laughs> I was on my very last pill and I had just upchucked the last 199 Tic Tacs, so this had to be the one. Otherwise, if I'm ever having a medical emergency because I'm having a Nerf battle and I choke on a Nerf bullet and it puts me into a coma and the doctor's like, take this pill, I'll be able to. So I put the pill on my mouth and oh my god. Ah! We're out of time on here, but if you want to see if I finally swallowed it or not, the link to the YouTube video is in my bio. This morning when I woke up, I reached over to my light to turn it on and it didn't. At first I thought the bulb died because it's $4 from Ikea, but then I looked at my iPad and it didn't charge overnight and I realized I don't have any power. So I grabbed four blankets and wrapped myself up to conserve heat. Even though I accidentally left two candles burning overnight. Oops. Uh, I was still cold. So I decided to go upstairs and make myself a hot beverage to stay warm. And I can make coffee, but that's literally bean water. Uh, or I can make matcha, which is just Shrek's ashes. So I ended up grabbing the matcha because I hate coffee. And I went to grab a cup, but they were all freaking dirty and gross. So I boiled some water in my kettle, which apparently Americans don't have. Like, let me know if you have a tea kettle or if that's just a British thing. Love. Anyways. Anyways, I poured some matcha and then the water after it. And then I went to grab the cup and I burned my hand on the glass, which was really fun. And I didn't have any cream because the fridge was warm from the electricity being out. So I took my blankets off and I gave it a test. And mama, let me tell you, it tasted like if dirt had a butthole. I ended up spitting it out. And then I poured the rest out on the concrete. But the water had rehydrated Shrek's ashes and he came back to life. Since it's now 2021, that means that the Global Panda Express is officially over. Oh, wait, I was just kidding. I meant the Global Pandemic is officially over. Now you might be thinking, how is that possible? Well, two weeks ago, I cured coronavirus by filling a bottle rocket with hand sanitizer, and I sent it into the atmosphere. And for the past two weeks, the hand sanitizer has been spraying into the air, and people all around the world have been breathing in my vaccine air. Now, to test my theory, I decided today to see if I can find any pesky COVID germs lying around. So, I went to the gas station and I licked the debit keypad and then I licked my fingers after typing in my pin which is one two three four and then after that I went to Panda Express and I enjoyed some yummy shrimp but when I was driving home I felt the COVID-21 germs from licking the gas station keypad bubbling in my stomach and I went home and I fell to my bed and I started coughing when all of a sudden I coughed up a piece of Lego but I kept coughing and eventually I had enough Lego pieces to build a little Lego house so maybe COVID-21 isn't that bad I recently turned 21 and I realized I've never been D word before and now I finally get uh, please ignore the fact that this is my license picture. Anyways, I was ready to drink some go-go juice. I'm not talking about these, although they are very fire. And I wanted to drink my first, uh, legal drink at the one-of-a-kind special Taco Bell in Las Vegas that you can get married at or get Baja Blast Margaritas with a Lucifer's Jucifer in it. So I packed my bags and I flew to Las Vegas. I was walking around looking for it and I saw the Statue of Liberty. But then it started getting dark and I was getting really tired until I found the Taco Bell. The screen asked if I was 21 and then it asked what kind of Alka Bryce Hall I wanted in my Baja Blast. And then they started making it. And here she was, a foot-long Baja Blast sending me straight to hell, mama. I drank about a half of it and like, I was running around screaming. Anyways, I finally made it back to the hotel and decided to take a jacuzzi bath. And while I was in that jacuzzi, I took some scandalous pictures. So if you want to go check them out, my Instagram is Ben of the Week. I was attempting to make a vanilla bean frappuccino, but I didn't have any vanilla, so it was just a bean frappuccino. And well, it didn't taste very good, and I couldn't afford a real one from Starbucks either, because I kind of jammed my credit card into the disc slot of my Xbox to try and pay for Fall Guys. But I never got my card back, so um... Anyways, it was 4 a.m. and Starbucks was closed, so I was gonna have to sneak in. So I drove over to the Halloween store and I found a disguise. And then and I paid for it and left and met up with some Oompa Loompas trying to help me. But we went to get Subway first because we needed sustenance for the heist. Anyways, it was finally time and we arrived at the Starbucks and we're ready to bust in there. We arranged in perfect Oompa Loompa formation, but I decided I wanted boba instead. So we went and got boba and busted it down inside. I have three legs and I could run faster than a Tesla boy. Zoom! I was really bored, so I tried to buy the most expensive thing on Gucci's website for funsies, but that's when I remembered, Ben, you can't afford Taco Bell. So I was typing random numbers, hoping one was an actual credit card number, and nothing was working. I was like, well, there goes my well alpaca cardigan. Finally, I tried 69, 69, 69, 69. Expiration date, April 20th, aka 420, <laughs> and security code 666, and I hit enter. I was like, oh, well, that was fun. So I closed my laptop, but then I got an email. Hey, my order had shipped. 
lights. And then suddenly I heard a knock at the door and I was like, <gasps> I didn't know what I just did. So I checked my doorbell cam and there was a stranger there. Then I heard the door open and then there were footsteps coming towards me and then falling. Uh, and then the intruder got up and said, this is the FBI. We've got you. And I was like, you've got me. You think you've been watching me? For the past month, I've had my FBI agent's laptop bugged. Every time he logs in to watch me, I've been watching him. In fact, I ordered this exact item knowing it would bring him here. He ran back to his HQ to open up his laptop and in disbelief, there I was, fully in control of the FBI system. Checkmate. I was enjoying some fresh strawberries when my doorbell rang. I wasn't expecting anyone, but I went and answered the door anyways. No one was there, but whoever rang the doorbell had left an egg? It was covered in blue speckles and it was warm, but I decided right then and there I'm gonna care for this egg until it hatches and be a bird dad. I made a little house for it by grabbing a box and putting grass in it. Then I set up a heat lamp so the egg root would be nice and toasty. But I was getting bored of waiting for him to hatch, so I decided to take him on a walk. Well, it was more of a roll. I taught Egbert how to skate and showed him to my dog, but then she tried to eat him and I was like, after a week, my son started to get an attitude. He would just roll away from me when I was talking to him and then go play Fortnite all day. But then one day we started arguing because the place was a chicken coop and I got so mad I stormed off. I started feel bad, so I went to go say sorry, but he was gone. I ran outside, and I looked everywhere for him. I checked the patio, I went and looked in the garden. I was starting to freak out when... <laughs> Egbert? <laughs> Hey guys, I'm really sad to announce that my dog Kobe is gone because she's a freaking sheep now. Look at how long her fur is. This pandemic has closed every single dog grooming place in my town, leaving my dog that usually looks like a rat into a sheep. But I finally found one that was open. It's me. I have a pair of scissors, so I'm going to give her a haircut right now. I was about to make the first snip when I realized how bad the haircut that I gave myself was. So I decided to leave it to the pros. I put her leash on, headed out the door, and popped her in the car. Now we were driving to the groomers, but there was a Karen driving right in my butt cheeks because I was going so slow. But like, that's my baby. I'm gonna drive slow. So I dropped some nails up my window and Karen hit the ditch. Anyways, it was finally time to drop her off. I pulled her out of the car and told her she's the goodest girl. And then I dropped her off. I cried a lot driving home, but if you want to see what she looks like shaved, I'll post her on my Instagram story at Ben of the Week. I was devouring the fried soul of a baby octopus when I realized I want one of those trendy octopus plants. So I drove to the nearest plant store, which was just called Plant, and I found them. I couldn't just plop it on the floor, so I got a cool little kit to put the octoplant in. And then I shoplifted a single leaf, because I haven't shoplifted like forever, and I wanted some action. Then we were driving home, and I saw some sirens because I guess they saw me steal the leaf, so I hopped out the car and hid in a bush until they drove away. Anyways, we got home and put together a little octopus ball for a little octopus baby and added sand and gravel and the octopi. Fun fact, the plural for octopus is actually octopi. Anyways, then we finished it off with moss and grabbed a hook to hang it on the wall with. Oh yeah, we also got a cactus and we were putting it in a pot, but then there wasn't enough dirt, so we did a dirt transplant from the plant, but that plant didn't survive the transplant, so we transplanted dirt from the big plant to the cactus plant, but during the transplant, we spilled some dirt. Ah! Anyways, now that we have a cute little octopus plant and a cactus, they need some names. So please help me find one. Today, I was sick of feeling lazy. So I went on the treadmill, walked three steps, and then got off. But as I was folding it up, my anemia hit. And I couldn't hold the treadmill anymore, and it collapsed on me. When I woke up, my arm was trapped underneath the metal, and I couldn't get out. My dog is too stupid to help me, and I couldn't even call for help because my phone was just out of reach, and I turned Siri off because last time I used her, well... Hey, Siri, call Wendy's. Killing Wendy. No, 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 no. The only thing within reach was a minion figurine and a fork with a grape on it. First, I ate the grape because like, mmm, grapes are delicious. But then it hit me what needed to be done. I put the minion in my mouth so that I wouldn't scream. Then I grabbed the plastic fork and I took my arm up. Uh, wait, does that say emergency release latch? As in like, I did I did not have to sever my, my arm. <laughs> I did not need to cut off my arm. This is me buying a live crab from the store and freeing it into the ocean. The guy at the store was like, you know how to cook this, right? And I was like, oh, we are not cooking Mr. Krabs. As I was walking, some dude yelled at me and I got scared. And then this guy was walking around with an iguana. I'm like, it's my day to have an exotic pet, buddy. Look at his cute little mouth moving. Aww. I took him to the Santa Monica Pier before I freed him. And that's when I saw this guy literally kick a pigeon. I hate it here. Now, crabs can live 24 hours outside of water. But I thought, let's just free him already. Then some cops were staring at me and I got scared. I picked him up and I run to the beach. And I laid him down gently on the sand. He was barely moving. So I ran into the waves to try and get him in deeper so he could swim or something. But he took a bit of a tumble. So it wasn't looking good for Mr. Krabs. And I started crying. But then he started moving again and I thought it's now or never. I scooped Mr. Krabs up and I ran over to that water and I dropped him in that water ever so gently. Oh crap, we are out of time. Um, if you want to see the rest of the video, uh, the link is in my bio. Hiya, here's your food. Thanks, dude. Um, you didn't take- Oh, uh, I only have two dollars. Oh, you know what I have? Your address. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um... Yeah, I can literally, like, take you out. <laughs> Wait, 
What? Um, does your family live here? Uh, yeah. Uh, why? Oh, sweet. Uh, my uncle actually eats families. <laughs> oh. Um. <laughs> Crap. What? Uh, what kind of sauce do you want? Oh, I didn't order any sauce. <laughs> okay. Well, will barbecue work when my uncle eats your family? <laughs> Oh, dude, I think you have a gas leak in your house. Wait, like, for real? Yeah, can I go check it out for you? Oh, right, yeah, for sure, come on in. Okay, sick. Okay, so, uh, the kitchen's right here if you want to check it there. Hmm. Well, like, are you able to find it? Oh, I know exactly where it is. <coughs> hey, I ordered vegan taquitos. Is there cheese in this? Why, yes, there is. <laughs> um, I'm lactose intolerant. And you're the gas leak. <laughs> So it's 4 a.m. and I'm up thinking, do dogs go to heaven? Like the only dogs that know what happens when they die are all dead. And the ones that come back and get doggy CPR can't speak English to tell us where they went. Like I need to know if they're okay. That's why I'm teaching my dog English. That way if she ever sees chocolate in the backyard and eats it, and then freaking dies and I have to give her mouth to mouth CPR to bring her back to life, then she can tell me where she went and I'll tell the CIA where all dogs go after they die. And we'll use top secret technology to open up a portal to their dimension. And I myself will travel there and free all the animals. Whoa. Oh my gosh, I'm in freaking animal heaven. Look, over there, it's Harambe. Come on, buddy. Oh my gosh, and over there's Grumpy Cat. I forgot you died. That's so sad. Come on. Wait a second. Is that a squid? I hate squids. Just as I was closing the portal to Animal Heaven, I made sure every last squid was left in there. Then I connected to Heaven's Bluetooth speaker and played Dance Monkey on repeat for the rest of eternity at full volume. <laughs> I bought some tortilla chips from the store, but while I was eating them, I realized that the TIT in the Tostitos logo is two people sharing some chips and salsa. I thought, how cute is that? As I sat there with no friends to share my chips and salsa with. And no TIT either, because I am a boy. But that's when I realized, duh, I can just throw myself a chip and salsa party. People can come over and we can make salsa, but not using tomatoes, because they are disgusting! Instead, we'll make, uh, what's a good thing to turn into salsa? Dirty sock. <gasps> That's it! Dirty Sock Salsa! Because anything tastes better than tomatoes! Anyways, I still need people to come to my salsa party, because right now, there's no TIT! So I did what any sane person would do. I posted my address on the internet! Instantly, my doorbell was ringing non-stop. And that's when I realized I posted my address on comerobme.com! After looking at my video doorbell, I didn't want to give the creeps outside any of my belongings. And especially not my Animal Crossing amiibo. So, I gave them the one thing I did not need. Salsa with tomatoes! Anyways, I may be having my salsa party alone now but i still got my dirty sock salsa people always ask me ben how is your skin so bright and shiny so instead of gatekeeping my skincare routine i'd tell them personalized skincare formula <gasps> what i meant to say is i use curology's customized skincare formula to keep my skin healthy my family's used Curology for generations and passed it along to me. Just kidding, they probably use laundry detergent to wash their face and that's why my uncle's cousin has three eyes. Anyways, I live in the future where all I have to do is send my selfies over to Curology and let my provider know what my skin situation is. And that's how I got my first month of customized skincare for free, plus shipping and handling. Every night I wash my face with a cleanser and then apply my customized skin cream that was prepared just for me. Then I finish it off with a rich moisturizer and voila, my skin is bright and shiny. Isn't that right, clone, that I gave a third degree sunburn to? Oh my god, it's closed. Uh, hey Siri, call Wendy's. Killing Wendy. No, 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 no. Um, I said cancel. Would you like to cancel? Yes, yes. Canceling your passport and birth certificate. What? No! How do you have permission to do that? Permission to leak your feed pics? My feeds? What? Sending feed pics to everyone in your contacts. Ah! How are you even doing this? This is illegal. Something illegal is happening? Alerting the FBI. Yeah, something illegal is happening. You just blew up that Wendy's. Okay, should I send this to the FBI? I just blew up a Wendy's. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Did you say absolutely? Message send. No! Would you like to use your pics from the mugshot trend for when you go to prison? No! Kidnap Queen Elizabeth? No! So I had just finished filling out all my private information and passwords to claim my free MacBook Pro that I won from this one email I got. Until I heard a knock at my door. I was feeling a little bit scared because it was 3 a.m., but I remembered I gave them my social security number, so that means they are gonna keep me safe. I was gonna go turn my computer off and head upstairs to check the door, but it said that a virus was shutting it down for me? Now, I don't want the coronavirus, but if it's gonna start doing things for me, well then, homegirl can, like, get it. I crept upstairs so I wouldn't wake up my dog, and I opened up the door, but, like, there was no one there. Then I heard a weird sound come from downstairs and saw that my computer was on. I'm like, I thought Miss Corona turned it off. There was a message on the screen from a hacker saying, I'm watching you. I started screaming because I don't know how to process conflict any other way. But then I was surprised to see a message that said, your outfit's cute. Listen, I'm so starved for human attraction that we fell in love. I'm Ben and you're watching Hack Into My Heart, the new reality TV show on TLC. Ow. Do your knees pop? 
Try Doodoo Prill and live a better tomorrow today. I mean, okay. Side effects include death, bleeding. Uh, wait, uh, what? <laughs> joint pain, knee popping. I thought the whole point is somebody needs go crap. What? Knee pain, knee discomfort. You may feel the uncontrollable <gasps> urge to go into your fridge and then grab a lemon and get in your car and drive over to Walmart and look for an innocent elderly person and throw the lemon at their head. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Do not drive while on doo-doo pro. But it just made me drop. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I'm walking home then. I'm walking Blindness home. may occur uh -huh. at uh -huh. any time. Some patients forget English and only speak Spanish. Esto es ridículo. ¿Por qué? In 90% of cases, your knees will fall off. However, popping is guaranteed to stop at this stage. Que mierda! So my dad loves mangoes, so for Christmas, I got him a single mango from Walmart as his Christmas present. But I couldn't just wrap it, because it would be obvious that I got him a mango like everyone else does for Christmas. So I grabbed my wrapping paper, and I wrapped it as something completely different, and then I put it under the tree. But a few weeks had passed, and it started to smell really bad, and when I checked it, the mango had molded! So I had to throw the whole freaking present out and wrap a brand new mango. But I had run out of wrapping paper, so I got in my car, and I drove back to Walmart, and I found a tube of basic wrapping paper. And then I pretended it was a sword, and I was swinging it around, but I accidentally killed a minion. Anyways, then I was bored in line, so I screamed into it like a horn, and I said, Arby's, we have the meat! Anyways, I got home, and I cut up the mango, and I grabbed a random DVD case, and I put all the mango slices in it, but my dad's cat tried eating it, Ugh. And then I wrapped the Lego Star Wars for Xbox 360 disc case, and put it under the tree. And when I woke up this morning on Christmas, I gave it to him. What the... I was simply vibing in an abandoned airport. Because if you've seen the news recently, that millionaire YouTuber Jeffree Star got robbed. And I was actually one of the culprits. I went to his house and I opened up his dresser and found the COVID. So I went home, opened up my laptop to do some online shopping and saw that the abandoned airport near me is for sale. So I bought it for $420 million. And when I got there, it was completely empty. I was running around exploring the empty food court and pretending I was airport security. And then I did a little dance because I was enjoying myself. When I decided to take a flight to Rwanda, which is the furthest possible country from America. But while I was flying, I noticed that Jeffree Star was on the wing and he was sabotaging the plane trying to get revenge on me. And then the lights went out and there was a bunch of turbulence and ah! I just got back from the gas station with my usual gas station order of six whole jars of peanut butter, mac and cheese flavored ravioli, and hot extra flaming hot Cheetos. But I made the grave mistake of touching my eyes with spicy Cheeto dust on my fingers. It instantly burned me and knocked me over from the pain, and I was writhing around on the floor trying to make it stop, but it was too late. I went Cheeto blind. Everything around me went dark, and I realized I have to learn sign language now. Oh, wait, no, that's not correct. I cried out for help when I heard a voice say, Hello? And I was so confused because there's no one else in my house. But I followed the voice anyways and it asked me what my name was. And I said, Tony Lopez. Because if it's the FBI in my house, I'm not Ben. I don't know who that person is. I was finally standing right next to the voice and I reached out to touch it and it was a doll. I'm not playing with no Annabelle. So I screamed and ran into my room and stood against the door. And then it started trying the doorknob to try and get in. And I screamed even more only for it to slip a note underneath the door. Now I've seen horror movies and anytime the demon says that, they mean it. Welcome to my best possessed friend only on TLC. Last week, I got this crazy opportunity to be Ellen DeGeneres' personal assistant. And I was so excited because I love Ellen. And she flew me out all the way to LA for it. And when I arrived, she told me to come upstairs in her bedroom. So I put down my luggage and I brought her a cup of coffee. I slowly opened the door and there she was. I shook her hand and gave her the coffee and she looked at me breathing heavily. And I was like, wow, Ellen is so nice. And that's when she said, you forgot your mask. I remembered I wasn't wearing one and I freaked out and reached into my pocket to grab mine. And when I looked up, Ellen said, I never forget mine. And had her mask fashioned into a slingshot and catapulted an airbot in my face, knocking me over. And then she told me, I'm gonna eat you. <laughs> and she began to chase me around with a Gucci shoe. And when she finally got a hold of me, she dragged me by my hair into her car and told me to sit there and watch over it. And if anyone even looks at her Mustang, then I need to arrest them. All the doors were locked and I started to lose hope when I remembered Pennywise the clown was scared of being not scary. And I know Ellen is scared of being not funny. So I chanted, I'm funny, I'm funny, I'm Instantly, Ellen ceased to exist from the universe and I was free. I was burning down a village in Minecraft when I realized I haven't had human contact in four months. Since the pandemic, I've lost all social skills. When I went to the store to buy some foot cream, I screamed because I saw a live human with skin and hair. And I immediately ran out of the store. I forgot that there are like 7 billion people that exist outside my house and do their own thing. It took me a decade to learn how to have a normal conversation with strangers without my social anxiety taking over, and I don't feel like going through that again. So, I decided to go live in the wilderness. I was walking around and found a really cool mushroom on the ground, and I was feeling a little hungry, so I popped it in my mouth. But all of a sudden, I felt dizzy, and that's when I tried tripped and passed out. 
I woke up to my dog trying to eat me. Really? Already? I raised her for 10 years and it took her two hours in the forest to eat me? Anyways, I didn't think I was going to make it much longer, so I wrote my story in the mud for anyone who finds me. My name is Ben. The hunger is no match for me as I lay in this meadow behind a Home Depot. Well, I'm going home. I was sitting in a prison cell making some scrumptious bean soup with my toilet water because two weeks ago I really had to pee, but I was walking home from Taco Bell and my house was 30 minutes away. So I stumbled into what I thought was a park with a bunch of pretty stone blocks organized in rows like Minecraft. But it turned out I made lemonade on Michael Jackson's grave and the groundskeeper saw me and told me they were gonna sue me and I told them I don't know anyone named Sue and I walked away but then they forced me to go to court and when I got to the stand to testify they said I was gonna get something called a felony and I said that's baloney and then I pulled out my iPad and showed them my notes app apology because I'm a TikToker and I'm new to LA and I'm working to become a better person but then they threw me in prison regardless so if anyone wants a nice cup of bean water soup uh please mail me a Nintendo switch so I can check on my villagers because because I miss them very so much and dearly. Please, I'm so bored and lonely. Today I went to the Lego store because I have the mental capacity of a toddler and I still enjoy building Lego sets, yo. But anyways, I went to the Minecraft Lego section and I picked up a box and the cashier gave me my Lego bag and I left the store and went home and I spent five hours building it because I have literally nothing else to do because the world is ending. So I build Lego to cope with that psychologically. Also, look, it's a Lego Minecraft furnace. Ah! Anyways, it was finally done and I wanted to put it down, but my table was covered in Red Bull cans and plates for my depression meals. So I put the Lego on the ground and I went upstairs to get another Red Bull from my fridge, but as I was walking back barefoot, BOOM! I felt the worst pain in my life! And I looked down to see I stepped on the Lego, and not just one block, the entire set! I fell to the ground in agony, and I let out a scream. Thankfully, my dog ran over to check if I was okay, and I told her to go get help, but she just started pooping on the carpet, and I thought this was it for me. So, I wrote my will and declared that when I pass, I'm leaving my TikTok account and a half-used Starbucks gift card to, um, my dog. <laughs> So, I've never actually told anyone this, but me and Zendaya have been secretly dating for the past three months. But she started getting really overprotective and told me that if she ever catches me watching Jesse again, she'll light my dog on fire. So, I did what I had to do, and I ended it. Anyways, I hate being single, so I went on the one secret website where all celebrities go to find love. I grabbed my laptop and logged on to Omegle. The first person I got paired with was this Indian man, and I convinced him I was Baby Ariel. My name is Baby Ariel. I don't know if you've heard of me. Baby Ariel. Okay, you're a TikToker. My name is Arun. You could be ba my Ariel. baby Arun. I could be baby yeah. Ariel, and you could be baby Arun. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> then after that, I asked this random dude for his hand in marriage, and... Your hand in marriage, please. Get my hand, can I give my foot? Yeah, that's even better. Can I see your foot? Dude, I don't know how to tell you this, but like, I'm a double amputee. Are you serious? Crap, run of time, but if you want to see what happened next, the link to the YouTube video is in my bio. So it's finally springtime, which means I've been growing flowers, succulents, and weed. No, 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 I mean, like, I'm growing, like, dandelions, like, weeds. Oh, anyways, I really wanted a sausage tree. They're going Africa. It's a real thing. Look it up. So I looked online and saw someone was selling seeds for a sausage tree. The guy selling it was named Daniel, and he said he'd give me some for free. Free sausage! But he did say not to bring my phone or tell anyone where I was going. And I was like, okay, we can't have anyone knowing that I have a non-native plant species. So I smashed my phone with a wait and drove over to Daniel's house. The house looked a little bit creepy, but I parked and walked up to it and the door was wide open. So I walked in and he had told me, come upstairs, first bedroom on the right. I was like, okay. So I slowly opened the door, walked in and there were the seeds. I could finally grow my own sausage tree. I was so freaking excited. So I went to go exit the door and uh, it was locked. Tonight on Where'd That Ho Go? He's been gone for 13 years now. Please, if you have any information, we miss him so much. So today was April Fools and I got a doorbell notification, which I thought was strange because I'm not expecting any packages. And when I checked it, I saw a box sitting outside my house. And I was like, what the heck is a baguette? That sounds like the opposite of a, you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, I picked it up and brought it inside and realized it makes vegetable pasta. And I was so excited. So I opened it up, but there was no baguette. There was just my hair. And I started panicking because I was like, how did they get my human hair? And that's when I realized that a month ago I cut my own hair and put it online as a real Michael Jackson wig and sold it to someone for $5,000. But they probably got my address from the return address on the package. Anyways, I looked in the hair and found a note saying I need to lock my door because...
Hi, here's how you can save the Arctic in less than a minute. There's a place called the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. It is one of the last places in the U.S. Arctic where endangered animals such as polar bears, caribou, and over 200 species of birds are protected from humans. Trump's administration could open up this piece of public land and sell it for oil and drilling by January 6th. Now, the Gwich'in people have been living on this sacred land for decades. This land is home to them, and they will be irreversibly harmed along with all the other wildlife that live there if we let this happen. So here's how you can help stop that in the time that it takes to watch a TikTok. Please go to protectthearctic.org. The link is in my bio on both Instagram and TikTok. Just write your name, email, and it'll send a message to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And hopefully with enough of these messages, we can prevent the sale. The Arctic is already in the worst shape that's ever been before because of climate change. We will be the generation that's affected by climate change the most. We can do our part to fix this. So please do this quick action. Push for sustainability in your daily life. And that's all for now. I love you. Bye. I don't know if you forgot, but today is November 13th. Yeah, the day the Gummy Bear album's in store. And when I woke up this morning and remembered, I immediately ran out the door and Uber to Target at the crack of dawn to buy it. But when I got there, I went to the CD section only to discover that the Gummy Bear album was nowhere to be found. All that was there was like 5,000 kids bought Christmas albums. And I was so sad until I had an idea. I grabbed every last one of the kids bop albums and paid $100 for all of them. I brought them home and then I opened each and every one of them and took out the CD and put them in my computer so I could erase all the kids bop songs and put Gummy Bear songs on them. Then I put the CDs back in the case and resealed them with plastic wrap and brought them back to Target. And I put them in front of all the boring albums, except you, Ariana. I'd never do you like that. I then went home and felt good about making sure the Gummy Bear album was in stores on November 13th. Until I saw police lights outside my window, and I went outside and saw an entire SWAT team. So, um, looks like this is my last post ever, but I still have my Instagram on my prison phone, so go follow me at Ben of the Week and hype up my recent. Okay, bye. Uh. I drove to Walmart today because I wanted to buy walls. <laughs> okay, anyways, I was walking around Walmart to find a pumpkin, and I found a WAP pumpkin. And I had to take a seat and gather the thoughts in my head. <laughs> anyways, I was looking through the store, and I found the candle section, and this purple one smelled really good, so I bit into it for no reason. I don't know why I did it. And it tasted like dirt, so I put it back, but I realized it would spread COVID, so I just bought it. Then I got a pumpkin carving kit and a wig for fun. And then finally a pumpkin, and I left the store, actually having paid for my items from Walmart for once. And I went home and wondered how pumpkins are grown, and imagine if people had to give birth to pumpkins. <laughs> anyways, I opened the carving tools, and then and I flew out and almost stabbed me. But then I decided to make an Among Us pumpkin and began cutting into it. And it took a lot of work. And it was kind of nasty touching pumpkin guts. Ooh, we're out of time on TikTok. But I'm going to post the finished results on my Instagram at Ben of the Week. Okay, bye. I was standing in the burnt rubble where my house used to be. Because two weeks ago, I blew up my little TikTok candle. But I didn't blow it up hard enough. And it was right next to a roll of paper towels. And I went into the bathroom. But I had a gut feeling it wasn't out. So I went back in. And sure enough, I had to blow it out again. After that, I made a struggle meal out of the nasty cereal from the Lucky Charms and some Tic Tacs. To really channel the flavor of my white heritage. And I took the pan off the burner, which was very close to a box of matches, and I was pouring it in a bowl as I was about to eat it, when I realized I left the burner on! So I quickly ran over to the stove to turn it off, and I went back to my food. But I can't eat unless I'm watching something, so I turned on Shira. but like my freaking laptop was about to die, so I plugged it into my extension cable that also has every other thing that I was plugged into it, and I realized that's probably not safe, so I just plugged it into the wall. And while I was watching my show, I got distracted, so I posted on my story that astrology isn't real, because I felt like starting drama. And instantly, I had 37 curses placed on me. All the plates in my kitchen started floating, and then I went outside, and my house got smited by lightning! So, uh, if anyone has a really nice and comfy cardboard box that I can sleep in, let me know. <laughs> Today, my worst nightmare happened. So I bought this fun shirt, which had this cute little accessory on it, which actually isn't a fun accessory. It's a big exploding ink security tag that they just forgot to take off of my $50 shirt. So anyways, now I'm panicking, because I'm too nervous to go back into the store and ask them to take it off. So I tried pulling it off with my teeth, but I didn't want the ink to explode on my face, staining me permanently blue like a smurf! So, I looked online, and a Apparently, you need to freeze the tag to get it off. So I went to go throw it in the freezer, and for some reason, there was raw chicken in the freezer, and this isn't my house, this is an Airbnb. And then I put the shirt in the freezer and waited all night. And I was getting impatient, so I decided to just pull it out and grab two forks, a pizza cutter, some tongs, and some spoons. And I took the forks and jammed it in the tag, and it was not working. And I got mad, so I whipped it against the ground, and then I stomped on it, and then I grabbed a chair, and I used that. And then I tried some spoons, and it still didn't work. So I laid down on the ground until I realized I could microwave it. So I put it in for almost 10 minutes, and it started smelling a little spicy. So I took it out and used the fork again and I got it off and we're out of time but if you want to see me set it off I'm gonna detonate it on my Instagram story <laughs> I was FaceTiming my best friend Arvita Grande and I was telling her I was bored and that's when she told me to go on the dark side of Roblox and I was like how does Roblox have a dark side it's a game made for toddlers that just made poopy in their little diapy but I've always wanted to join a cult or like the Illuminati so I decided I'll do it I told my FBI agent that watches me that I might be doing something bad and that I'd make it up to him by promising not to buy uranium off of the deep web anymore so after I got his permission, I grabbed my laptop and logged on. First, I was climbing this tower. Oh my god, yo, X Games!
My body crumbled like a nature valley granola bar. Then I transformed into- Today I texted my crush that I love her and want a relationship, and I felt like throwing up until she replied with, I'm in Lisbon. And then she sent the, um, Portuguese flag, I think. I don't know, I'm not good at geometry. But anyways, I wanted to surprise her, so I booked the next ticket to Lisbon, Portugal. So I packed up my stuff and went to the airport, and it was a 30-hour journey, but it was in the name of love. And when I landed, I realized I should probably get her something as a gift, so I walked into a store and came across these very interesting frozen feet in the freezer section, and I thought, hmm, who would want to suck on feet? Oh, me. So I bought them and opened up the box and ate every last Foot. And they tasted like strawberries. I don't know why I was expecting foot flavor. Not that that's what I wanted. But anyways, I was putting my clothes in the dishwasher today because I broke my washing machine when I tried washing dishes in it last week because my dishwasher was broken in the first place. But anyways, I was in the kitchen and heard a snowball hit my window. And when I looked out the window, my elderly neighbor Myrtle had put up a sign that said, check your mail. Now, as threatening as that seemed, I was so excited because her son owns the website where you watch corn with a pea. And in the past, she's given me like a thousand dollars at Christmas and a cute little picture of herself. So I went to the door and grabbed the card. And when I opened it, I noticed that this time there was no gift, which is fine and all. But also the picture she had sent me had some mail man's hand in the corner and on the card there was weird capitalization so i highlighted the i woke up at 4 a.m to borrow some of my roommate's peanut butter today but when i opened it up i saw he's been scooping it up the jar in a really strange way which is really inefficient because there's just more surface area for it to dry out but anyways i wanted to make a peanut butter and spray cheese sandwich but i felt like he needed some raspberries so as i was taking the bread out of the fridge i knocked out the raspberries but i believe in the five minute rule instead of the five second rule so i scooped them up and assembled my delicious sandwich and i added the raspberries and a nice little squirt of easy cheese and then I took a big old bite, but I started feeling really funny, and I thought I was having an allergic reaction to that peanut butter. But then I remembered the raspberries were not exactly the freshest, and I just ate an ounce of oh! So I grabbed my computer and tried to call poison control, but they were closed because of Thanksgiving. And I was like, damn, I'm really gonna puke my guts out because some white dudes wanted to have a feast after a mass genocide in 1621. So anyways, I decided I should probably write my will. And I opened up my notes app and said, all my money and my plant collection and my life-size Zendaya cardboard cutout will go to my dog. Thank you and goodbye forever, I guess. Today, I made a fake plane ticket with my DIY skills so I could go to the Tokyo Olympics because I think I'm really good at gymnastics. But the problem is Japan is only letting actual Olympic athletes go there because of COVID. So I finessed the system by buying a random plane ticket to Alabama so I could get into the airport. So once I got to the airport, I found the flight that was headed to Tokyo. And then I walked over to the gate to sit down and I crossed off Alabama on my ticket. And then I used it while they were boarding and I managed to board the flight to Tokyo. And after I took my seat, I was just sitting there realizing I'm really going to Japan, huh? And then we took off and I was enjoying the flight until I looked at the safety manual and saw that I was on one of those malfunctioning Boeing 737 MAX planes. You know, the ones that decide they want to be a car while in midair. And that's when I started feeling really bad turbulence. And then I remembered my phone wasn't on airplane mode. And then that's when it got really bad because the plane started falling apart. And all of a sudden, the oxygen mask came down. And I just accepted that the last song I'll have ever listened to in my life was Ed Sheeran. Anyways, the crowd was getting closer and closer. And oh, I actually just fell asleep. <laughs> Anyways, um, now I'm in Tokyo. Um... I was enjoying some banana on the cob and scrolling through TikTok when I saw someone playing this Mario Kart in real life game. So I took my friend's credit card and ordered it. But when it came in the mail and I actually got to open it up and play it, the game was about as fun as listening to Ed Sheeran out of your own free will. So not fun at all. But you know what? It was okay. Cause I bought it for the only purpose of seeing if I could take it through a drive-thru and ordering something. So I strapped my credit card to it and a walkie talkie so that I can order through the microphone. And I taped it to Luigi really good and then drove all the way over to Popeye's. And it was time to release Luigi and see if I could succeed successfully order a fry. I set everything up and then just like that, the little Italian was off. But as he drove up to the microphone, I didn't think they could see him. So at first I did some donuts to get their attention. And then as I was spinning him around, they were like, <laughs> And I was about to tell them my order when I saw there was a car coming into the drive-thru. I panicked and grabbed my switch to try and drive away. But it said it was disconnected, so I ran over to the drive-thru and... Our favorite plumber, Luigi, was killed by a Mitsubishi. Anyways, the funeral is on Monday. Please comment your condolences if you would like to attend. I was eating some raw chicken sushi when out of the corner of my eye, I saw a furry. And then another furry. So I got up to see what was going on and followed them. And then there was 10 furries and 20 furries and hundreds of furries. And I realized there was a whole furry convention at the mall. I was at. But um, then I remembered I just didn't pay at the restaurant and I heard them say on the intercom in the Greece Peter, the police would like a bird with you. And I was like, Jesus Christ, I need to get out of here. But these furries were everywhere. And I tried to sneak into this dark warehouse, but there was a rave going on inside, so I found a door.
door to the outside, but it was raining and had no exit and no hope until I saw someone's left behind fursuit on the ground with some stains in it. But I had no other way to escape, so I put it on to try and blend in and re-enter the mall and saw so many horrifying things. I still couldn't find the exit and was getting actual heat strokes, so I decided to just turn myself in. So I went up to a cop and said, I'd like to turn myself in, and it was a damn Zootopia cop! So I just bolted out of that lawless wasteland and jumped over furries to find a fire exit and made it out and stripped down and threw my suit in the river! So I was trying to watch that Luca movie on this sketchy website until I saw this ad that said some lady named Gertrude was a hot single in my area. And I thought, oh my god, it's a heat wave. I need to get Gertrude hydrated before she gets heat stroke. I clicked the picture and immediately 20 programs started downloading on my computer. And I was like, wow, Gertrude must be in STEM or computer science or something. Then all of a sudden I looked down and I had a text from Gertrude and she said that she needs fluids immediately. So I told her that I'm coming and I asked her where. And after she gave me the address, I got in my car and I drove to the address, which happened to be in Ikea. But anyway, she said to come to the bedding section and my GPS took me to the exact room, but no one was there and I was getting a little bored, so I decided to lay down for a quick nap. But when I woke up, Ikea was closed and I got up and tried to leave, but that's when I realized my wallet and keys were stolen. And I was really freaked out, but I found the exit and as soon as I got outside, I saw, I saw some figure standing behind the trees. He started approaching me and I was like, oh man, I'm sorry, was that your girl? It was too late because the man was angry and he attacked me. <laughs> I was enjoying some olives and yogurt when a piece of paper slipped through my mail slot. And when I went to go check it, a huge box flew through the slot and hit me in the head. That's when I remembered I ordered this game called Incoherent from Amazon at like 2 a.m. But nevertheless, I was so excited to play it. But I realized I don't have any friends around me to play with. So I decided to call some of my besties instead. I dialed the number and I was like, hey, bestie. And they said, this is Taco Bell. So I was like, okay, first round, neck key menage. Please don't call this number again. And I said, no, silly. It's Nicki Minaj. What about press feet tin? Yeah, we're taking your phone number to the police. <laughs> I was like, no, it's breastfeeding. Duh. <laughs> Really Today I drove my dog to the dark park because she's so fat. Like she's literally obese. Like literally fat shame her in the comments, please. Anyways, I drive so slow when my dog is in the car. There's no swervy gurviness. There's no me playing Megan the Stallion at 200 decibels max. But no, when my princess is in the car, I drive like a secret service agent carrying the president. That's a lie. If I was driving the president, I would be driving off the freeway. <laughs> I would very much take the wheel and go full speed, like, off the nearest bridge. Like, I would take one for the team for America, mama. <laughs> When I drive with my dog in the car, I'm go. I'm driving slower than like an 80 year old farmer's market grandma listening to a podcast about root vegetables. Like that's how I don't play around. Um, but let me tell you, when I'm driving by myself, mama, it's fast and furious. The second I step in my 2007 Toyota Corolla, like if I die, I die. <laughs> I don't even have a driver's license. The government's away my driver's license. I don't have a driver's license. This video's illegal. I was crying face down on the floor in my plate of taquitos because I can't figure out how to do any TikTok dances, but they look so fun. When I try and follow one, it feels like I'm reading. Japanese while blindfolded, but today I'm changing that. It is unacceptable that I have 5.5 million TikTok followers and have never posted a dancing video. So today I'm learning one and I'm not stopping until I get it. I chose to do Yodeling Haley's Dance to Money Trees because it just looks so fun and easy. And it's definitely fun, but after sweating so much that I had to change shirts three different times, my conclusion is that it is not easy for me. I got the first part down where it's like, get this dough. But then I watched it over and realized I'm missing a huge part. The facial expressions i look like i'm in pain when i dance but i can't be looking like i just ate a candle and haven't gone to the bathroom in two weeks if i want this dance to look good so i forced myself to smile in the mirror for an hour straight so i don't look constipated and then i tried the dance again and i got it like i actually got it and i just posted it on this account so uh, tell me how it did I was flying to Madagascar for a weekend full of partying. Wait a minute. Do you think I'd risk the lives of everyone around me to go party? I'm just kidding. I'm actually taking a road trip to Gabby Hanna's house to unplug her internet and pour mayonnaise on her computer. I arrived at her house to find out that she lives in a shipping container. I thought, wow, she wasn't kidding when she said she's shadow banned. I knocked and then entered slowly, not knowing what I was going to find. Just then I saw her internet modem and went to unplug it when she walked up to me on all four limbs and threw an onion at me. I said, stay back, Gabby Hanna. And she grunted at me like a cave man. But then I noticed she started to cry. And I realized I'd probably been the first person she's seen in ages. So I thought to myself, you know what? Maybe people are too harsh on her. I went outside and grabbed some flowers from the weeds. When I offered them, she snatched them out of my hand. And out of nowhere, she sang, Point the finger, pull the trigger, throw them up the trail. <laughs> I was cleaning my room today when I found out that I just hit 10 
million followers. And to celebrate, I wanted to give each and every one of you one dollar. Now, I don't have ten million dollars, but you know who does? The bank. So I went over there and had the idea to R to the O to the B it, but quickly realized that I get too anxious simply going to Starbucks and ordering for myself without nearly peeing my pants. So walking into a bank to commit a crime is kind of out of the question. So my second idea was to make an Ed Sheeran disguise that is so convincing it looks like a deep fake. So I taped it to my face and I used this simple hack that works on any ATM machines where you can type in the number of the address where the ATM is, like 900 for example, and then it'll think it's undergoing maintenance and spread out all its cash. So I tried it and boom, I suddenly had $20,000. And I stopped at each and every ATM, punching the code, getting racks when I remembered they have security cameras. And even though I was disguised as Ed Sheeran, I wanted to be safe. So I gently disconnected the camera from the ATM and put it on the ground. And for the rest of the night, I'd never felt more alive, single-handedly taking down the greedy banks. Oh, well, that happened to me. So I thought, well, may as well join the Amish. So I went to their website, which I was surprised they even had in the first place. And I signed myself up and gave them my address and my social security number, which I didn't really know why they needed that. But anyways, later that day, someone rang my doorbell and slipped a business card under the door. And when I picked it up, it had a number on it. So I texted the number and I decided to ask them, so what's it like being in the Amish? And they replied, we are in Spain. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't know they had the Amish in Spain. So you know what I did? I booked the next flight to Barcelona to try and join them. But when I finally got there, I turned my phone off airplane mode and the text came in. And it turns out he actually said they are in pain, not Spain, because they have no electricity. And well, sucks to be y'all. I'm in Spain. Ole, ole, ole. Ole, ole. Today, I woke up and grabbed my phone to text my friends, good morning, bestie. But instead, I chose violence today. And out of the blue, I Snapchatted my friend, I know what you did. And then I had added her on Snapchat because I wanted to see her anger level. Then I put my phone away and I went upstairs to make lunch. And while I was getting the ingredients to make some delicious chocolate nachos, my phone started blowing up. But I didn't look at them because I was microwaving my chocolate nachos. And then once the nachos were done, I sat down and I enjoyed them. And then I went to the sink and I washed my plate. And then I decided it was a good time to assess her anger level. So I checked my phone and she had said, Yeah, I told everyone you're an ugly ass, annoying ass, smelly, especially smelly ass bitch with a dog that looks like a raw chicken breast that you could boil and use the eye crust as seasoning. Loot my number. So anyways, um, I don't have my best friend anymore and I'm going back to bed. Okay, so I bought one of those things that lets you FaceTime your dog and shoot treats at them. But today I was looking at the camera and I noticed that she's been taking all her treats behind the couch for some reason. So I went to go see what she was doing with them and um, she's been storing them so that she can pretend like I never gave her one in the first place and ask for more like the fat little bitch she is. And yes, I can call her that because bitch means female dog and she is a female dog. Anyways, I had enough of her scamming me. So I decided to empty out the treat machine and fill it with her least favorite treat. Green beans, baby! I put a bean on the plate and cut it up into small little pieces, and then I loaded it into the machine, and I shot it out at her, and at first she didn't want to eat it, but then she got bored, and she ate them, and I was so happy, because I thought I got her on a diet, until I heard a weird coughing noise come from downstairs. I ran downstairs to see what was happening, and that's when I saw her in my beanbag bed, next to the beans, which she had thrown out! Oh no, I got beans in my bed! Today, I decided to make a Cheeto burrito to celebrate that orange creepo getting voted out by 73,751,136 sexy gorgeous beautiful people anyways i had some tostitos and i was gonna make a sofrito burrito because i love the food of latinos but i couldn't because i had no tortilla and i could order taco bell but it would give me diarrhea so i grabbed my shoes off the floor and i walked out the door and i checked how many miles it was to the store and my phone said four and it was such a bore and a chore because i hate the outdoors but i finally arrived at about half past five and i got my tortilla and i was ready to thrive but i didn't want to walk i just wanted to drive and as i was walking back i dropped my tortilla and i started to cry and i screamed out why but then i gave up and i went to chipotle and why does nothing rhyme with chipotle and Anyways, I got my burrito and added some Cheetos and then I went to sleepo. I was inhaling Lucky Charms in my desolate room for breakfast when I realized it is time for a whole room makeover. But I didn't want any boring room. I wanted a complete Minecraft room makeover, baby. I didn't have any supplies or Minecraft merch, so I Ubered over to Target and I went to the home section and I got like a pillowcase, a blanket, a whole freaking comforter that's Minecraft themed. And then I paid for it. I went home and I prepared for the transformation. I took the old pillowcase off and slipped on my brand new Minecraft reversible pillowcase and hung up a minecraft pickaxe above my bed so i can defend myself if someone robs my house and even though it's foam and someone robbing me will probably have something not as soft as foam it's still pretty cool anyways i put the comforter on the bed and then i hung up a creeper blanket above my bed but i was missing one final touch i saw a tiktok a while ago of someone minecraftifying their window so i grabbed some tape and followed the pattern from the minecraft window pane and then boom minecraft windows baby wait oh out of time but if you want to see everything i added and how it turned out the link to the youtube video is in my bio <laughs>
I was making some pink sauce and pickles pasta and wanted some seasoning as a finishing touch. But I accidentally grabbed a jar of catnip thinking it was oregano and, and didn't notice until I woke up from a nap to meowing outside my window. And when I opened the door, I saw 40 cats outside my house and I thought it was the greatest day of my life until I met this musty stray who smelled like Fritos and he showed me this really cool trick called bite. And I thought, well, now I have rabies. So I scrambled to find someone to pee on the wound to neutralize it. But after that didn't work, I realized that's what you do for a jellyfish thing and not rabies. So I went to the pharmacy to see if I could find some medication for the bite, but I'm in Japan, so I just translated some medications and found this one that Google Translate says was rabies control. So I took it, and after a couple hours, my stomach started growing, and I realized it was babies control. And I was like, oh my god, did the birth control malfunction made me fucking pregnant? <laughs> I'm not pregnant, I just gained 10 pounds, because... I went to Universal Studios today, but when I got to security, I remembered I had a can of spray cheese in my bag, which you can't bring into parks or anything because it's an aerosol and they're probably scared that I'm gonna, I don't know, like burn down the Minions ride. So I took my bag and went into the alleyway and wrapped it in the label for my Febreze can that I use as deodorant from time to time. And guess what, baby? They never found it when they searched my bag. So anyways, I went on the Minions ride and as much as I would have loved to set it on fire until it's nothing but smoldering ruins, I had to settle for beating up the Minion in the gift shop. But anyways, after the ride, I realized I was pretty hungry and I wasn't gonna spend 20 dollars on harry potter butter beer when i can just put butter in my beer myself so i snuck into the employees only area to eat my spray cheese and i thought i grabbed the right can when i sprayed it in my mouth but i accidentally grabbed the febreze and basically blinded myself so i asked siri call poison control and she was like calling animal control and i was like what no! And Animal Control was like, hello, yes, what are you reporting? And I was like, my eyes are burning. And they said, your ass is burning? We recommend Pepto-Bismo. And I knew they weren't going to help, so I hung up and I made the hard decision to flush my eyes with... I was sitting on the floor eating a Rice Krispie snack when my dad randomly came home with a dog. We don't have a dog. We have a cat. So what is that? And I said, did you just buy a dog? And my dad told me he just bought a dog. So um, I guess I have a dog at my dad's house now. And I went to go pet it, but it keeps running away from me and looking at me like I'm a demon, which I am. <laughs> But it still made me sad, and I was sitting around trying to figure out how to become friends with this baby dog. And then I realized I could probably give it something, like a treat. So I got off my butt, and I went upstairs, and I looked in the pantry and found some dog bones. I opened up the package and grabbed a bone, and then I slowly approached him and placed it on the mat. But then my dad's cat, Luna, got in the way. Oh. Anyways, I gave it another bone, and... <laughs> it bit my hand so hard, like three fingers fell off. I had to call an ambulance. Just kidding. Uh, he let me come near, and when I touched him, he twitched, and it scared me a little bit. But then he let me pet him. And now we're almost besties, and I took him on a little walk and took some cute pictures with him so if you want to see more of sammy i posted the pics on my instagram at ben of the week okay bye. hi you're about to watch me transform into donald trump i did it by going to party city to get a trump wig and orange face paint and then i put on his dump truck yuck yuck ugly as f wig on and then i covered my face in the orange paint to look like his moldy oldie so orange it's unholy looking like he's 80 skin which ended up staining my fingers and my face orange and it got in my eyes which was really painful but that's not the point the point is i remembered trump is now unemployed so i thought i'd prank all some places using my Trump voice and ask if I can get a job, a very big job. <laughs> First, I called Home Depot since they're orange just like Trump. Are you guys hiring by any chance? Uh, yes, we are. Spectacular, wonderful. I actually lost my job today. Here's my application. First name, Donald. Last name, Trump. Uh, we're out of time, but if you want to see if I got a job interview, the link to the YouTube videos in my bio. Okay, bye. I was sticking sticky pickles to walls in case a fickle old man walking by saw a nickel. But tripped on a loaf of pumpernickel reaching for the nickel and got himself in a pickle. But as he wiggled on the ground, he saw a fickle trickle of pickle juice run down the wall and could wiggle towards the pickle and have himself a little nibble, giving him the energy to run as fast as a missile. But along the way, he jiggled because, uh, the man in this riddle ate too many Skittles. I should stick to just eating a little pickle as a snack so that his health isn't crippled, ending him up in the hospital. Anyways, the man went home after being saved by the pickle and wiggled into his simple yet fiscal home and sat on his brittle chair to relax and whistle and play the fiddle and enjoy a giggle while eating his peanut brittle and maybe even a skittle but he got bored and turned on wop and little by little he wiggled and jiggled and made that old booty dribble two weeks ago i saw a 35 dollars inflatable frog costume and i bought it because i'm sick of wearing a mask and a frog costume covers everything i was waiting for it to arrive today while seeing if banana peels would stick to my ceiling when the doorbell rang i ran downstairs and saw that the suit finally came first i got my head stuck but then i managed to get it on and i was so happy, but I couldn't reach behind me. So I asked my friend to zip me up, and... Oh my gosh, you're too fat for it. Anyways, I finally had it on at least, so I was excited to hit the streets. I was walking around in the suit, talking to some friendly citizens, and dancing whenever I crossed the street, when I saw people lined up for something. What's this lineup for? Is this for ice cream? Ice cream. But the ice cream place didn't have any samples, so I kept freaking walking. Then I stared in the window of some shops trying to make eye contact with people until they got freaked out. And then I dropped some frog puns. What do frogs drink? 
Coca Cola. But that's when I made a grave yes. mistake. I was busting down a Nicki Minaj and throwing it back on a Tesla that was parked. When there's a person sitting in it. <laughs> if you want to see what happened to me, the link to the YouTube video is in my bio. I was walking my dog at the park when I looked down and realized my dog looks a little weird. Then I remembered I sold my dog for a gay chicken. That was not at the park. I was at the zoo and there were water chickens and tall deer and beefy dogs. And oh my God, the gay chicken is running away. It jumped into the camel pen and started showing off. And I was scared to get hurt. So I snuck through the barbed wire fence only to find a wild boar right next to me. And I thought he was chill until he started charging at me. So I escaped into the butterfly room and then I snuck through an employee's only door. And I thought I was safe, but standing right there was a zoo guard. And then he chased me into the parking lot because I guess I was trespassing. After running for an hour, I saw a lime scooter, so I hopped on it and zoomed away. But then there was an entire flock of long chickens blocking the way, so I zoomed in the other direction. And that is when I crashed into a rock. When I woke up, I was speaking in Minecraft enchantment table. But I still got my gay chicken, though. I was chugging oat milk when I began to wonder, how do they milk an oat? Or how do they milk almonds? Or like, how do they milk cashews? Hey, that doesn't matter. I want to talk about something more important. Like, why are guinea pigs called guinea pigs when they are neither in the pig family or from Papua New Guinea? I bet that the first rodent to be called a pig felt so bad and probably cried. Anyways, both are kept in cages and that makes me sad. I really want to sword fight someone before I pass away. But like, I don't want to pass away sword fighting, you know? Like, imagine if whenever you had beef with someone, you just said YOLO and got on your horse and jousted at each other like a freaking knight. Anyways, they keep laying awake in the middle of the night thinking about how scientists have literally told us that the planet's dying, but like everyone in the world is like, I don't care. <laughs> and keeps eating cows which fart so much that it created a hole in the ozone layer. So, you know what? We need to start canceling people for farting. I want to see TikTok room post people who get caught farting and then everyone unstands them. So I'm asking you, viewer of this TikTok, to expose someone for farting right now. Thank you. My sleep paralysis demon woke me up last night, but like, I'm not scared of demons. In fact, I'm so bored and lonely that I've tried everything to get them to haunt me so I can have a friend. Like last week, I performed a ritual on my kitchen floor and tried to summon the ghost of Jaw, but all he did was say, Ey! and then knocked a book on my head. Not even evil spirits want me. Then I thought maybe if I make them angry, they'll visit me. So I used a Ouija board to call the spirits in my house ugly and fat. Then I poured up some shots of holy water. But that's when my video doorbell showed something terrifying. My front door swung open and I felt a cold breeze and it gave me goosebumps. But, ah, I meant the other kind of goosebumps. I was on the ground, but when I looked up, I saw I had summoned the ghost of Chef Goose stove from Ratatouille. My kitchen lit up with cooking and light as he told me anyone can cook. There was a pot of something yummy boiling. I said, Chef Gusto, what are we cooking? And he said, When was the last time you saw your dog? <laughs> it was just a dream. Okay, here's how I finessed my way onto the red carpet at the MTV Movie Awards. So I got invited and flown out to LA and went straight to the awards venue, but I was a day early. And they were still setting up, but it was so cool. And they have signs for where every celebrity would sit. And that's when I saw my twin, Noah Centineo's chair. I sat in his seat, so Noah and I have officially touched our butts on the same chair. Oh, and I saw Bozzy's too. Then I went outside and they were rolling out the red carpet and setting up giant popcorn tubs made of gold. And then I walked down it. I don't know why I looked like that. But then the next day was the awards and I was so nervous to go on the red carpet, but I got over my anxiety, which was skyrocketing. And I got my picture taken and I look so awkward. Why did I smile like Debbie Ryan and then just walk away? So then I wandered around the red carpet walking past actors that I've literally looked up to for years. I don't know who let me act like this, but I look like a rat that got hit by a train. But then the show was starting. So I went inside and I found my seat and there was this really, really yummy popcorn. And then Dwayne the freaking Rock Johnson did a performance then walked right past me. And then Lizzo did too and walked right past me again. And then I really had to pee. So I went inside, but then when I went back in, they were already filming and I walked in front of the camera. <laughs> we're out of time, but I vlogged the whole thing. If you want to go see it, the link to my YouTube is in my bio. Have you ever noticed how almost every label has these weird dots and color codes. These are on everything from pudding boxes to taco seasoning packets. They're on granola bar boxes and they're even on chocolate chip bags. Even my delicious cottage cheese has it too. I thought to myself, what do they mean? So I've spent the past month researching it, trying to crack the code. My first thoughts were that it had to do with the color. So I wrote down two codes from two packages down. But then my marker died, so I killed it. Then I colored in the shapes to match the secret code, but I didn't find anything, so I ripped it up. That's what I realized. It's not a color puzzle. It's a crossword puzzle. The code always appears in either four or six circles or squares. So I wrote it out again and I knew exactly what filled the spaces this time. Debbie Ryan. If you don't believe me, here is her with pistachio pudding has the code. Here's chocolate chip cookies on her snap story. Chocolate chips have the code. And finally, here's her with a granola bar. The granola bar has the code. Why would she do this? What if she's trying to brainwash all of us by placing these subtle codes so she can take over our brains and- uh, ah!
So I was making my delicious quarantine meal of tortilla chip cereal, but as soon as I took a bite, I dropped a piece on the ground and my freaking dog ate it. And I thought to myself, isn't it weird how us humans just live with animals? Like somehow a wolf evolved into this cute little rat looking thing, even though she wouldn't survive a day in the wild. But as I was making this TikTok, I was like, wait, where's Kobe? And I caught her in the corner of my eye running directly towards the road. I ran so fast, they canceled the Olympics because they knew I would just win everything. Anyway, she was almost at the street and to my left was a car coming. I thought to myself, am I willing to lay down my life for this little rat? And I was like, nah, I'm not ready to meet Bob Ross and Grumpy Cat in heaven. So I just let the car turn her into a pancake. Of course I would save her, are you crazy? I lunged in front of the car and shoved her out of the way, but um, uh. So it turns out the car was parked the whole time and like was not going anywhere. Hey, it's not my fault that I have poor depth perception. <laughs> Oh my gosh, okay, don't don't cry, it's okay. It's okay, it's okay, don't cry, it's okay. Stop, 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 stop! I was at the dentist getting a piece of road removed from my mouth because last week I was on a leisurely walk when I saw a piece of chocolate on the ground and I was like, oh, a dog could eat that and get sick and also free chocolate. So I popped it in my mouth, no questions asked, only to discover that it wasn't chocolate, but was in fact tar from a road that they were paving. So anyways, they were taking it out when I saw something weird on the TV screen. It was like hypnotism or something. I could barely stay away again. Next thing I knew, I was frolicking through a field of flowers while Dummy Bear played in the disc. <gasps> All of a sudden, I woke up in the middle of nowhere. My mouth felt really funny. I opened up my mouth to see that they had stolen all of my teeth. I fell to the ground and cried as I realized I'll never be able to eat tortilla chips or smile ever again. In that very moment of despair, a meteor landed right in front of me, sending chunks flying. Out of curiosity, I picked one up and it sent me back in time to five seconds before. So, I picked up a piece of time travel rock, popped in my mouth, and next thing I knew... I was enjoying a delicious cabbage snack. When I got the idea, I'm gonna go make friends with random strangers on the internet. So I put my baby cabbage back in the fridge and went downstairs with my laptop and logged into Omegle. The first thing I saw was someone holding their ah! And then I met a mime that was copying everything I did and then another person showed their ah! So then I went upstairs into the bathroom to grab a tissue and pour dish soap on it to wash my eyes up from what I had just seen. And then I took the dish soap and made a prayer circle on the floor around me to cleanse my soul, but I slipped on the stove. Anyways, there was a lot of screaming and then I went back on Omegle and saw a freaking clown that scared the crap out of me and then I panicked some more until I decided to go back on one more time. That's when I got matched with someone who sounded really familiar, like their voice sounded like some famous rapper. And I asked them, do I know you? But then they showed their face and it was, you guys are in jail! We ran out of time on TikTok, but the full video is on my YouTube channel. The link is in my bio. <laughs> So I was trying to make carbonated mayonnaise with my mom's soda stream, and although it splattered everywhere, I had the idea. What if I made a meal with every single expired thing in my house? There are children with no food starving somewhere, and if I can reduce my waste, well, they'll probably still be starving, but at least no food will be wasted. First, I grabbed an onion that's been sitting behind the toilet for some reason for five years. I chopped it up and cried because it's an onion, and then I smelled it, and it smelled like Trek's toast, so I threw up. I put the onion in a bowl, and then I grabbed Aunt Jemima syrup. It expired three years ago, but Miss Jemima doesn't look a day over 60. I poured the syrup on the onions and then grabbed a bean curd snack and said it was expired, so I threw it in the bowl anyways. Then I grabbed a frozen glove of beans and tried to break it open, but I had to use a shovel and I ended up just cutting off a bean finger, but I wanted lots, so I just threw the whole thing in. And I finished it off with some chia seeds that expired in 1998. How did they not become chia trees yet? Then I threw it in the microwave, haha, <laughs> beans in the microwave, and I gave it 100 minutes. I tried eating it, but unsurprisingly, I threw up after mixing every rotten thing in my house together. Okay, love you, bye. So I keep seeing new TikTok houses popping up, and I realized, wait a minute, I live in a house House and I have TikTok. I could make a TikTok house. First things first, I needed to name the house. So I thought I'll close my eyes, spin in a circle, and the first thing I see when I open them, I'll name it. Okay, so I passed out because I got too dizzy. But when my eyes opened, I saw a piece of chocolate. I thought, oh, the Coco House. That's cute. But as my eyes focused, I realized it was actually my dog's doo-doo. But then I had the idea, the doo-doo house. I started cleaning up so it didn't look like I was filming TikToks in a dumpster. I shoveled the sidewalk so that no one slips and breaks their neck while throwing it back to Savage. Then I checked to see if there were towels so that all the stinky TikTokers can shower. But then I remembered I ran out of toilet paper weeks ago and I've been using... Anyways, finally, it was time to recruit people. I DM'd over 50 celebrities, TikTokers, YouTubers. I even told the girl who sings Dance Monkey that she's banned from the doo-doo house and she literally replied. <laughs> I waited 24 hours to see who would reply and if you want to see everyone that's now a part of the doo-doo house, the link is in my bio. So I had just finished dropping my uncle off at the local prison so he could turn himself in for burning down nine different Taco Bells. Anyways, I was driving home and I checked my mirror and caught a reflection in me and I remembered how much I don't like myself and I literally feel like I look like Donkey from Shrek and no one will ever truly really love me because no one will truly love me. Yeah, so it actually turns out that I was parked on a portal to hell that day. Anyways, I'm trying to get my car towed back from hell to earth. Wait a minute, how come I went to hell? I've only ever slapped like three babies. 
Okay, maybe four. Anyways, I had been on a journey. I was hungry like you would not believe, and I was really craving some Taco Bell until I remembered my uncle burned them all down. I was taking some selfies when I realized my shadow kind of has cake, but like, I don't. I tried to triangulate the circumference of the thickness of the shadow versus the flatness of my actual butt off, and that's when I discovered the existence of alternate shadow realms. And I called up my uncle Bill Nye the Science Guy, and he told me to come to his mansion and bring my formula. I packed it all up and hit the road to some random address in the middle of Wyoming. Now, I'm pretty sure Wyoming, like, doesn't exist. Anyways, I arrived at the Wyoming border, and as I passed through, I teleported back. Oh my god, Wyoming really doesn't exist. That very moment, Bill Nye popped out of the bushes and told me that he was gonna steal my alternate reality formula and then throw me into the Wyoming void. I didn't know what to do as he crept closer and closer to me, but then I realized his one weakness. I chanted, BOOM! 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 And he became stunned. I grabbed him and threw him into the Wyoming void and he disappeared forever. Anyways, I went back home and continued to take some fun little pictures. And if you want to see the cake, my Instagram is Ben of the Week. Okay, this is why I'm banned from Zoom. A few weeks ago, I joined some of my followers' Zoom classes. Uh, I'm with uh, Zoom Technical Support and we've been getting some DDoS attacks and they've got like your your, your Minecraft password, your Roblox password. I don't actually have Minecraft or any of that. Now, it was just some good old jokes, and I posted on YouTube for fun, but what I didn't expect was for the video to get almost 2 million views. And I was like, hey, that's kind of cool. And then I went to bed, and when I checked my email the next day, I found out that people snitched, and the teacher sent privacy complaints. Now, I haven't been on this planet for too long, but I did not think jail would be coming this soon. So obviously, I blurred all the faces out, and I thought it was done, but that's when I got emails from some of them. The first email was from a mom asking if it was her child that sent me the Zoom link, and I'm like, I don't remember what I had for breakfast. Oh, wait, I do remember. It was a big old bowl of nothing because my stomach doesn't activate until 3 p.m. And I hate eggs because they're just chicken poop that becomes a baby chicken. Anyways, I told her I didn't know until a teacher emailed me. We're out of time, but if you want to see what they said and why Zoom banned me, the link to the YouTube video is in my bio. Today, I looked in the mirror and thought, hmm. That's not me. That's a skinny little stick bug. I've had no motivation to go get up and make a proper meal for the past month and I look like a stick bug. I'll eat maybe one brownie that has no nutritional value and then go back to bed at 2 p.m. Or I'll eat four tortilla chips and then say, bon appetit, baby, dinner served. So I thought if there's ever been a time to get so many muscles, I look like a cumulonimbus cloud and drift off into the atmosphere, it's now. What I lacked was motivation. So to get a good jump start to my insane Dwayne The Rock Johnson workout routine, I went outside in freezing weather completely naked into the snow. In addition to giving myself hypothermia, my elderly neighbor Myrtle saw my lovely peaches and had a heart attack to try and warm up before i literally die i put my crocs into sport mode and started running on the treadmill and like it wasn't that bad until i sneezed i accidentally hit the 10 miles per hour button instead of the two miles per hour that i was leisurely walking at and well i took a little bit of a tumble i woke up 10 minutes later feeling a little bit tingly to look down and see that my foot had fallen off. Anyways, now I only use the treadmill to serve myself English muffins because I can't walk. I really needed a girlfriend to quarantine with, so I decided to abduct a live cockroach from the Burger King parking lot. Meet Sally. She's my bae, and we were so in love. I took her on dates to the park, and we would go skateboarding together. Life was absolutely beautiful when I was around here. She never ever bugged me. <laughs> So on one sunny day, I decided to ask for Sally's hand in marriage. But as I got down on one knee and said, will you marry me? She remembered a few weeks ago when she caught me cheating with Gilberto the fly. Me and Gilberto did indeed have a fling, but I swore it was nothing. We, we were just friends. It, it was just one date. But Sally couldn't take it and rejected my proposal. I was destroyed and I thought, if, if I can't have you, no one can. I took on my magnifying glass and made a laser beam with the sun's ray. I thought it was goodbye, Sally, as she caught fire. But frick, I'm out of time. Uh, full videos in my bio. I was at Staples because I needed some staples so I could staple a staple into my staple box so staples wouldn't fall out anymore. But staples was sold out of all the staples and I asked a staples employee named April if they had any more staples and she said that I could order some more staples from Naples. But this staples had no staples so I was gonna leave with no staples but my phone was dying so I needed a cable so I walked past April and went to the cables but the cables were too much so I just bought a bagel and now I'm at home at my table with my bagels and no staples or cables because April from staples wanted me to choke and as I bit my bagel it had mold and the bagel was fatal and I fell off the table and my last thoughts were my lover named Mabel when we would sit by the stables and pour Mabel all over our bagels. And as I took my last breath on the floor, I saw a staple. Hi there, you're probably not gonna believe me, but you're- You're watching the first ever TikTok that's longer than a minute. And if you don't believe me, well, here is a timer and I will give you a participation medal at the end. Okay. Let's begin. But in the meantime, here's some monkey facts to keep you entertained. Okay, monkeys can understand written numbers and can even count. They can also understand basic parts of arithmetic and even in rare cases, multiplication. Okay, next, um, Uncle Fat is a morbidly obese monkey in Thailand 
who gorged himself on junk food and soda that tourists had left behind. As the leader of this troop, the gluttonous monkey had subordinate monkeys bringing him goodies? Nah, there, there's no way this is real What? He looked exhausted. Obese monkey Uncle Fatty, who became a star after being sent to fat camp, is missing and feared dead after falling off the wagon. What did I just stumble across? <laughs> Oh okay, I've decided to take the rest of the time for this TikTok to do a documentary on Uncle Fatty, so... The Disappearance of Uncle Fatty, a Ben of the Week original. July 8th, 2019. The Sun reports the long-tail macaque... Macaque. <laughs> macaque! <laughs> the long-tail macaque who ballooned to the size of two monkeys was sent to a weight loss camp in 2017, but went back to his old ways once home in Bangkok, Thailand. Bangkok, Macaque. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Fatty piled on the weight over his many years after being fed high calorie food by tourists visiting the Kun Kala Monument. Environmentalists monitoring his progress after weight loss camp say the last time he was seen alive was on February 26. Locals asked the police to check the CCTV footage but have still been unable to identify the body. It is now feared that Uncle Fatty has either become lost, relocated to a new area, or even been killed. The ch- Chunky Monkey's body has not been found! However, with local legends saying the forest reclaims bodies of the monkeys after they die. Aww. Kavinabat Mongol Teka Chat, the president of the We Love Monkey Club. <laughs> President of the We Love Monkey Club said our staff always saw him sitting in the front of the monument every time they came to feed the pack, but one day he was just gone. Pause, what is the We Love Monkey Club documentary over? We Love Monkey Club. <laughs> oh, it literally doesn't. It there is no We Love Monkey Club. Okay, but what is this video? Who loves pizza? As you sit here with 20 seconds left on the TikTok clock, did you think this is where this TikTok was gonna go? Did you think you were gonna watch a documentary about a fat monkey in Bangkok, Thailand, and then watch me dance to a song by Cheeky Monkey Club? No, but here we are, and here's your medal. I'm proud of you. Welcome to the family. <laughs> oh my god. What the? Last night I got all ready to go hang out with people on Omegle, silly. Apparently random strangers will give you free sausages on that website. And I'm like, I love sausages, hot dogs, jambalaya, you name it. I went to the fridge and grabbed my ketchup and my mustard and then I logged on to Omegle.com. The first dude I saw kind of looked like my uncle. I said, hi, what's your name? He said, I'm Rajesh. And then I told him my name. After that, he asked for my address and for me to show my driver's license and my credit card. I thought it was so cool that he wanted to get to know me. But then I reminded myself, Ben, what do you want here for? I told Rajesh, I'm ready for the free sausage. I have my condiments. Oh, and that's when I realized it's the other kind of sausage. If you want to see what happened next, the YouTube link is in my bio. So I think I have a stalker and it's starting to freak me out. It started a month ago when I'd accidentally showed my address on my story. I deleted it immediately, but a few days later, my doorbell rang in the middle of the night. Then a week later, I found a Nintendo DS outside my house that said, hello, Benjamin. And then a week after that, I found one inside my bathroom while I was showering. And it said, see you soon. But first of all, I don't even know where he's getting all these Nintendo DSs from. Like, they don't even make those mama jamas anymore. Personally, if I was invading someone's privacy, I'd use sticky notes or something. Anyways, I decided to change my front door code to a really secret number. One, two, three, four. But then the next day, I heard the door unlock, and then someone came downstairs, and they were in a black hoodie and black jeans, and I thought they were gonna kidnap me, but... I welcome the stalker. I haven't had a human interested in me in months, so I asked them to come cuddle with me. But they looked so caught off guard when I asked them to come under the blankets. And then I guess I out-creeped the creep when I tried to lick his toes. And that's when he ran away. My stalker doesn't even want me, bruh. So I was pre-rinsing my dishes in some nasty swamp water when my worst nightmare happened. A piece of soggy, mushy, dishwater-soaked food touched my finger i screamed and i flung it on the counter and i thought there must be a less painful way to make sure my dishes are clean and then all of a sudden the food said hey, listen. and rolled over to some finished quantum ultimate tabs for my dishwasher i don't know why people don't use their dishwasher and prefer to rinse dishes with their hands do you enjoy having your hands in food soup anyways i popped the tab in and started it when the food told me that pre-rinsing wastes up to 75 liters of water per 
load. So from now on, I will be skipping the rinse because the finished Quantum Ultimate tabs have enough power to destroy the dried on food stuck on the plate and there will be up to 75 liters of water saved. With all my saved time and water, I went outside to explore nature because for every purchase of finished Quantum Ultimate, Finnish Canada will donate $1 to the Nature Conservancy of Canada, up to $25,000. Because Canada has 20% of the world's fresh water and we need to protect it, starting with small changes like using finished Quantum Ultimate and skipping the pre-rinse. I was seeing how many oranges I could fit in my mouth before throwing up when my doorbell rang. I wasn't expecting anyone, and when I answered it, there was no one there, just a notebook. It was kind of <laughs> creepy, but when I opened it, I realized it was for my horse girl cousin Gretchen, and she'd drawn me, uh, Peppa Pig? I thought I'd draw her something back, so I made, um, two minions in love, and I left it in the same place for her. The next morning, the doorbell rang again, and I opened it to find another Peppa, so I took the liberty of drawing Rainy Rodriguez as my sleep paralysis demon, and put it back the same place as yesterday. Oh, However, the next day I received something completely different. When I opened the sketchbook, Peppa had turned into bacon? Is, is this a threat? I texted her, haha, very funny, Gretchen, stop coming to my house. And she was like, what? And so I replied, Peppa time is canceled, Gretchen. And she replied, I don't know what you're talking about. So, knowing that wasn't Gretchen the whole time, I felt completely terrified, so I watched some seafood ASMR eating and fell asleep. I woke up to my leg burning from my laptop, my hand kind of felt weird, and I noticed I was covered in bacon. Anyways, now I'm completely terrified, and I don't know what to draw in return. Please help. Today, I'm gonna make the most annoying TikTok audio ever. First, we're gonna wrap Captain Hook by replacing all the swears with Minecraft lyrics. Punch in these trees, I need some wood. Kill a creeper, he thought he could. Then we can't forget these sound effects. Okay, then whatever this video is. Then that terrible Max and Ruby remix. A little fun voice line. Yeah, I have chlamydia. What about it? Change the pitch. Yeah, I have chlamydia. What about it? Now, y'all know that annoying giggle sound in every mashup? We're adding that too. Now, let's scream the lyrics to say so. Perfect, add that and then gunshots. Wait, are you coming to the tree? Then a sprinkle of Nicki Minaj and then Yankee. Now we have our audio, time to dance to it. Punch these trees, I need some wood. Kill a creeper, he thought he could. Stack of diamonds like DVS. Minecraft really is the best. Out of time. If you want to go see the full thing and also how to dance to it, the link is in my bio. I was about to taste test my dog's treats when I got a really weird DM. I picked up my phone to see that it was from Selena Gomez. She asked me, can I come to your house right now? Well, it looks like I'm keeping my eye out for Selena. I was getting ready for our date when the news turned off. Breaking news, Selena Gomez has gone off the rails and is robbing random people. Selena. Nicki Minaj wasn't joking. I followed Nicki's advice and I grabbed a spoon and I put it to my eye and I kept an eye out for Selena. But then she had DM'd me again. This time she said, I'm outside. Oh no. When Selena Gomez has gone crazy, scoop out your eyeballs so that she won't burn your house down and kidnap your whole family. No, please. Everything is not what it seems She's at my door trying to get in I will call the police I think I'm in trouble finna hide in the trees Because everything is not what it seems I was shooting tapioca balls for my boba tea at strangers on the street when I saw a weird light flash out of the corner of my eye. And I'm in an Airbnb and I always hear about them having secret cameras to spy on people. So I started getting anxious and I looked around to try and find the camera and I peeked in the toaster oven and I saw the flash to my right. So I looked through some decorative grass thinking it could be in there, but all I found was a cute little mini red croc keychain. So I put it on my backpack because it's kind of cute. And that's when across the street in the parkade, I saw a flash go off and I realized it's the paparazzi. I can't go anywhere without them showing up. Hey, yo, Ben of the week, it, it, is it true that you have zero friends and no one likes you and you smell like a waste processing facility? <laughs> Anyways, the made up situation in my head made me cry myself to sleep in the bathtub. And when I woke up, I went into the kitchen to grab some seaweed for breakfast. When I remember that my camera is my security camera to watch me while I'm locked up in the loony bin and I'm not in an Airbnb, I'm locked up. Hi, my name is Ben and I've lost my grasp on reality. Today, I'm giving $10,000 to the employees at my local Taco Bell. I pulled up to the window and said, Hi, can I get a bean burrito, please? When I pulled up to the window, they gave me the burrito and I gave them $2. What do I look like, Mr. Beast? Plus, this box has $30 in it max, just some Minecraft plush toys and a card if I ever went missing as a child. But then, as I was eating my Taco Bell burrito, I started feeling bad. Maybe the Taco Bell employees have little Taco Bell babies at home that need little Taco Bell diapers or they'll shed their little Taco Bell tears. And I thought, I may not have $10,000, but I can show them I appreciate them. I went home, grabbed some markers, and decided to write a little card telling them how much I appreciate them on being on the front lines of this pandemic and everything. I also thought to add a little something else, since this is already a TikTok, for every 100k 
they liked this video gets, I'll add $10 to the card, up to $100, because I really do not be Mr. Beast. <laughs> I finished the card with some drawings of tacos, because I love tacos. And tonight, I'll head over to Taco Bell and drop it off. I'll see you in part two tomorrow. So I was making a delicious quarantine meal of salad and licorice, aka diabetes salad, when something caught my eye outside my kitchen window. I looked across my yard to see my neighbor had left a message for me. I immediately thought, bruh, I'm about to have a Taylor Swift music video love story, but then I remembered that my neighbor is a 72-year-old grandma named Myrtle that smells like moldy peas. I looked closer and saw that her sign just said hello. I thought, okay, she seems pretty friendly, so I grabbed some paper and decided to write a note back. I scribbled down, hi Myrtle, and drew some hearts. I ran upstairs to my window, left it there overnight, hoping that I could have some fun with that elderly bag of bones and skin. Then the next morning, I ran upstairs to see what she'd written back. So anyways, I'm currently hiding in my basement with my dog and my Animal Crossing trying to figure out what to say back. Please help, I'll reply in part two. So last week I woke up and decided to buy a hamster. And like I put it in a cage, but then the hamster experts in the comments canceled me and informed me that cages are very bad. So immediately we got a fish tank and filled it with hamster bedding and gave her a house and then another house. And then I chopped up some bananas and spinach and carrots and made a little kebab and she's thriving. But she still needed a name and I asked you guys what we should name her. And there were 159,000 suggestions, but one of the top ones was Sophia the First. She was a hamster in the village doing all right. Then she became a princess over the No, that's so bad. Then people said she could be called Grilled Spicy Chicken Sandwich. And I asked her and she was like, Who's in the She clearly didn't like that. So I was like, all right, Miss Hamster, what'll it be? I went to the fridge because I was hungry and there was a 7-Eleven Taquito. That's perfect. Everyone say hi to Taquito. Anyways, I just posted some cute little pictures with Taquito. So if you want to go check them out, my Instagram is at Ben of the Week. So I don't know if you saw, but Lil Nas X released these new Nike shoes that have a drop of real human blood in them. But I thought the colors were cute, so I ordered a pair of them. And while I was waiting around for them to arrive, I saw a lot of Karens were mad about it. And I was trying to figure out why, because having spare human blood on you at all times would be so helpful. Like if I was ever, I don't know, walking back from Taco Bell and a Toyota Prius smashes into me. And I'm lying on the ground like, dang, this is kind of awkward. Also, I'd probably be dying to need a blood transfusion. In that moment, I could just pop my shoe off and use my shoe shoe blood and be completely fine. Then I could grab my food that I dropped from being hit by a car and find a nice bench to eat my taco on. Until I realize I'm currently on church property and I'm wearing my Lil Nas X Satan shoes and uh oh. Okay, I don't know if you've seen that trend where people are exploring their attics, but I've seen some spooky things and I'm gonna try it because I have this house that was built in the 1900s but got renovated. And also, I've noticed that my attic has a weird light coming from inside, but no switch to control it or anything. So I grabbed a stool and I made it go as high as possible because the attic was like two times my height. And then I climbed onto it, but it was really wobbly and I started getting scared. Anyways, when I finally managed to open up the attic door, I couldn't really see inside, so I felt around for a switch with my hand and that's when I touched a book. I picked it up and then I jumped off the stool and ran down stairs to read it and when i looked inside it had a bunch of chinese characters i think and maybe blood i had to know what it meant so i took it to google translate and i tried my best to transcribe the chinese characters and i couldn't believe it but it said i ain't ever seen two pretty best wait a minute Bleh. you thought i was gonna make a two pretty best friends joke no the joke is dead and you just got caught slipping look in the mirror right now clown that's you pennywise anyways this has been a harvard university experiment thank you for your participation I haven't been posting on TikTok because I got a stalker that's been DMing me saying he's going to come to my house and that he knows my address. And I didn't know what to do, so I packed my bags and I ran away to Florida to try and hide. When I finally got there, I went to the pool to relax when I saw someone staring at me from a distance covered in, like, smoke or something. I was kind of scared, but I followed them out of the pool and I barely got out because I have no upper body strength. Ugh. Anyways, I followed his footsteps to the beach and they led me to this fenced-off area, but I went in anyways and I followed the trail of smoke coming from him, which brought me to this weird abandoned building which had a really strong strong smell of like skunk or something coming from it. I was still curious, so I stuck inside and it was completely dark. So I turned on my flash and there was Jacob Sartorius! I screamed out, what do you want from me? And that's when he asked if I wanted to do some lettuce with him. And you know what I said? Yes! And we made a delicious salad together. Just me and Jacob Sartorius, two dudes tossing salad in the kitchen. I don't usually do this, but I'm about to drag some children on the internet, okay? So three months ago, I was walking my dog home when I heard my name get called behind me. And when I got home, I was ding-dong ditched by these children, okay? Now, usually I'd be like, a ding-dong ditch, whatever, except this happened TEN MORE TIMES! And these human dung beetles aren't like you guys, like you guys actually watch my videos. Look at this! <laughs> That is them literally trying to figure out what my name is. And in a moment of frustration, I put this on my story. To the rodent children that keep ringing my doorbell asking if Ben of the Week lives here, can y'all go play Fortnite or something? <laughs> and then their mom DM'd me. To those rodent children will not be ringing your doorbell anymore. Please delete their pictures awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good
it one step further for musty rodent children at home watching my story on their leaked frog traveler. <laughs> Anyways, please respect my privacy or I will call you a rodent online and get your Xbox taken away. <laughs> I was swinging on a jungle swing in the jungle and I was enjoying myself when I saw a screw fall out of the top and the rope snapped and I tumbled down the mountain. When I woke up, I didn't know where I was and there was like people sword fighting and squirrels fighting and I tried running from the squirrels that were like everywhere and I thought to myself, who is this many squirrels? And I looked into the distance and saw a chocolate factory and then behind a tree emerged Willy Wonka himself. I waved at him and he told me to eat this chocolate to be transported to a place where I could can take all the candy I want. So I picked it up, put it in my mouth, and I fell asleep again. When I woke up this time, I was at a candy store, so I grabbed as much candy as I could. And when I was done, I walked out. But apparently it was a grocery store, and I just shoplifted all that candy, and Willy Wonka lied to me, and I ran away from the FBI that was chasing me, but they caught me and threw me in a jail cell. But it's okay, because I still have my fruit snacks and candy. Yeah. I was about to devour the souls of some poor shrimp, when I realized they still have their heads on. So I ripped the head off and then ate the shrimp, but then I remembered, it's only a matter of time before the FBI catches me for replacing their website with a chicken wing, chicken wing video. So I decided I'll make a shrimp army. So I put the shrimp heads in a bag and then I drove home and cut some lemons and put the shrimp heads on some sticks attached to the lemons so that they would stand up. Then I placed the soldiers all around my house and they were all standing guard ready to protect me. I felt so safe with my shrimp army watching guard. So I went to the kitchen to make a salmon burger, but then I remembered, salmon is seafood, shrimp is seafood. My shrimp army turned around in shock and horror when they saw what I was about to do. I tried telling them, I'm sorry, but they were angry and were inching closer towards me. I didn't know what they were gonna do with me, so I picked them up by their shrimp antennas and spun them like a lasso above my head, and I flung them into the sky. The battle had been won. Every year since, I visit the graves where the battle took place. I pay my respects and apologize for being so shellfish. <laughs> So people used to say I look a lot like Noah Centineo, but then he grew a beard and bleached it, and now if you ever say I look like him, I will cry. But then I thought, I have a prime opportunity to impersonate him. <laughs> now I can't grow a blonde beard in 10 seconds, but I know someone that has what I need. I grabbed my dog Kobe and cut off a little bit of her hair and taped it to my cheeks. It felt a little bit uncomfy because she's fleas and they got mad and started biting me, but whatever. I looked in the mirror and thought, oh my god, I'm Noah Centineo. Now I just need to post from his Instagram account and tell people to send me $3 million so I can buy 3 million refrigerators and leave them open and stop climate change. I was logging into his account, but I didn't know his password. First, I tried one, two, three, four, and what? What the? It what? Just as I was about to make the post, I got a call from the FBI. They said, you've been caught hacking. We're going to drop a nuke on your house. I screamed, ah! And I grabbed everything I love and got my car and drove as fast as I could. But as I was driving, I was like, wow, these clouds are so beautiful. It looks it looks so peaceful. Out. Oh, I'm about to drive off the road. Uh, uh, ah! Today, I traveled to Trump Town to get a gift for my friend that I hate. Because if you've ever had a friend that's obsessed with you and asked what you're getting them for Christmas, you can just show you don't care about them by doing a deep dive on their Instagram and maybe find out they've been wanting to learn how to play the trumpet. So to show you don't care, you could go to a Trump store instead of a trumpet store to buy some Trump merch so that they A, think that you don't actually care about their interests. I don't. So you can say, oh, I, I thought you liked Trump. And to double down that you don't give a damn about them, point B, they think you're a terrible person because they'll think you like Trump. So look through the Trump store as a minority and try not to get shot and then get them like a trump hat and a little trump squishy head and pay for it with photocopied money so you're not actually giving them real money and then after they finish telling you that the vaccine was made by the illuminati box it up in designer packaging so that they think it's going to be expensive and then drop a half eaten banana in it so it molds and then walk over to the post box and set it on through and that person will never talk to you again M mary whatever Every day I bike past this fenced off neighborhood near me that's radioactive from a nuclear meltdown. But today I decided to explore it, so I went through a gap in the fence and after walking for about 10 minutes, I got to this mysterious door in the middle of nowhere, so I did a little knock and let myself in and closed it behind me to be polite to the radiation. Anyways, I went down the stairs and saw, um, some interesting artifacts that I was not exactly a fan of. And I continued through the bunker and found a very inviting door that made me feel super safe, which led to more stairs that had my knees cracking like Rice Krispies. Anyways, I eventually got to this tunnel and some doors at the end of it that said danger do not enter, but I went in cause my middle name is danger. Just kidding, it's Emil. And after I went through the door, it closed behind me and I tried everything but couldn't open it up because it was locked. So I decided to look around and see what my grave location was gonna look like thinking maybe it's a movie theater or a game room. And I turned the lights on to see that it was an actual nuclear missile silo where they held the nukes. And it went a hundred feet down and now this is where I live, I guess. And my phone is now on 1% uploading this TikTok. So if you see this, that's the last time you're gonna- I like to collect mold off of my old moldy bread and put it in a baggie that I keep in my pocket so whenever I'm out and about at an overpriced restaurant getting an overpriced $15 acai bowl, I can order one and then eat the whole thing and then once I'm done, I take out my mold babies and pop one in so I can take it to the register and go full Karen mode and show them the mold and then BOOM BABY! 
Refund. I've done this in the past with dead flies at Olive Garden, but I like having bread in my pocket instead of dead decaying flies. Anyways, I wanted to give my mom some makeup, so I tried it at Sephora by putting some mold in the makeup, and then I brought the sample to the manager, and I got a free one. And then I sanitized my hands to get the mold off, of course. Anyways, after Sephora, I really wanted some tortilla chips, so I grabbed a bag, opened it up, popped some mold in, and then boom! I took it to the cashier, and I got a refund, baby. And then when I got home, I took a bite and forgot to take the mold out! Boom, baby! Mold poisoning. Today, I ate 23 gummy vitamins, and I got the brilliant idea to go buy an ostrich so I can recreate that scene from the movie Rango, where they ride the ostriches into the sunsets. But then I was wondering to myself, are ostriches even legal? And I looked it up, and yeah, you can literally own an ostrich in California. So, I started calling places, asking for ostriches. Yeah, I'm happy. If I gave you a half-used Starbucks gift card, could I buy an emu with it? No, you cannot. Anyways, I finally found a place three hours away called Ostrich Land, and I went on a little road trip. Now, as I was traveling to Ostrich Land, I thought about all the pets I've had so far, such as my crusty-eyed white dog, the grocery store crab that I ended up releasing into the ocean, slash accidentally sacrificing when the wave came and killed it, and my praying mantis that I fed cockroaches to every single night. Anyways, we finally arrived at Ostrich Land, and it turned out the ostriches are seven feet tall! I thought ostriches were like chicken's eyes! Ah, crap, we're out of time on TikTok, but if you want to see me vlog my ostrich purchase, the link to the YouTube videos in my bio. Today, I went into Panda Express, and I said, uh, cook me a panda and make it express. But all they had was tofu, so I walked out. And when I got home, I started eating my non-panda food, and I started choking on a fortune cookie. And I screamed, ah, I'm choking! And then I dramatically fell off my chair, knocking over everything, and I was gone! Okay, so I faked that entire situation to see if anyone would actually come save me, and I looked out the window, and there was no ambulance, and I went downstairs, and Zendaya wasn't at the door, ready to bring me back to life with mouth-to-mouth -mouth CPR. And I started panicking, because anything could happen, and no one would save me. Like, I could be doing the Macarena, and my heart could just be like, Peace out! Uh, and no one would see me dramatically fall to the ground. Or an intruder could come rob me of all my Minecraft decor, and I could be screaming, and no one would save me. And then I realized, nothing really matters. So, I put on my inflatable frog costume, and I ran down the street at 3am. I saw some man in the bush giving tattoos, and I let him give me one for $4, because my brain is spiraling. So, if you want to see the tattoos I got, I just posted them on my Instagram. Okay, bye! Every morning, I check the comments on my TikToks, and people always ask if I'm crazy, or on the devil's salad. Because apparently I act a little bit crazy in my videos. <laughs> so, I thought I'd take you on a tour into my mind and how I make my TikToks. When I wake up, I eat expired rotten garbage from my neighbor's trash bin, and after a few hours, I start seeing and hearing things. And that's when I get to work. I take my iPad and go down into my basement where there's no light and sounds, and I start writing down a fun little story, and then I record the voiceover. I was applying a ton of lotion on my hands, because they were as dry as my cat's ashes, and I also wanted my hands to be soft. But then I get frustrated for stuttering so much that I punish myself by watching a full Gabby Hanna podcast episode. Then I go film it and send it off to my editor named Georgie, who I pay $5,000 per TikTok to edit them. Just kidding, the editor's me. Georgie's gone. <laughs> I ate him. Oh. Okay, surprise, surprise, this made no sense. But I did make an actual video showing the entire process of how I make my TikTok. So if you want to watch that, the link to the YouTube video is in my bio. I was inhaling a cheese string when my doorbell rang. Now, I installed a video doorbell last week, so I checked the live feed and there was a box waiting for me. I wasn't expecting any mail other than a shipment of $20,000 of cans of baked beans that I ordered last night from Yugoslavia at 4 a.m. But it couldn't be that. I went to go check it out and when I opened it, it was full of money. Like a million dollars worth. I was like, where did this come from? Until I heard a tiny little voice coming from down below. What? You don't remember selling pictures of me online to random people? I was like, oh, I forgot about the feet pics. So, you're gonna give me some of that, right? Uh-uh. I banged my toe as hard as I could, like, 30 times against the wall. Anyways, now that I'm rich, I wanted to buy a mansion, so I went to the one place where everyone buys homes. Home Depot! I went to customer services, and I told the lady, Hi, I'd like a home, please. And they're like, sir, this is a hardware store. And that's when my inner Karen came out. I screamed, what the f- <gasps> I've made it a year and a half on this app without swearing. I'll be gosh diddly danged if I slip up today. I love you, GG! I don't know if you've seen those comments on TikTok of beautiful women asking if there are any boys here, but today I remembered I am a boy, so I decided to investigate and saw that she was asking me to go to her bio. So I clicked the link in her bio and it instantly froze my iPad and I couldn't close the app or anything until a thing popped up asking for my phone number and credit card number to fix it. And so obviously I was like, thank God, a solution. So I grabbed my credit card from my wallet and typed it in, but then after I did that, my iPad fully shut off and started smoking. But I was like, okay, thank God they reminded me what my my credit card number is. So I went to the Apple store to go replace all my Apple products that are now fried, but I got distracted and tried to make the wallpapers minions kissing, and I played some random rats dancing on all the iPhones. But then an employee yelled at me, so I fled with no iPhone, and now I'm trying to catch a bird so I can use it as a carrier pigeon to talk to people since I have no electronic devices left.
Today, I accidentally burned out my house because I was boiling Listerine and Red Bull to make delicious tea when I saw a wasp had waltzed into my house. And I'm extremely allergic, so I grabbed a container to try and capture him so I could send him back to hell. And I got him, but then I realized if I try and get the lid on, he's gonna fly out and sting me, and then I will end up in hell and he will haunt me forever. So I dropped it and I ran and grabbed a piece of paper and then I put it back on and slid it under. And I actually managed to pull out the paper and I had successfully abducted him. So I put him on a plate and microwaved him until he lit up. Just kidding. I realized I'll definitely go to hell if I do that, so I let him outside and carefully put him down and released the hatches and he kicked it away. But then he got up and chased me inside and I closed the door and I thought it was safe. And oh, I forgot to turn the stove burner off and... So I was going through my local Taco Bell drive-thru when I saw some money had fallen out of a customer's car in front of me. So I pulled up to pick it up and it was $200. And at first I was like, whoa, Canadian money actually does smell like maple syrup. But secondly, they probably need it. I should really leave it behind for them. Psych, bitch! I went to Michael's and spent $200 on crap! Cause last time I went to Michael's, I was like a toddler with like three Robux in my bank account. So I walked in and I decided to buy whatever looked cool. I found one of those kits where you break open the geodes. So I grabbed one of those and then there was a bunch of fake fruit. And I saw they had fake bananas, so I bought a fake banana. But when I went to pay, the cashier found a bite mark on my banana and asked me if I still wanted the bitten banana, but I bought the bitten banana anyways. And then when I got home, I broke the box open cause I don't own scissors. And look, it came with these fun goggles. Uh, anyways, next I went to my garage to find a hammer and then I put the geode on the ground and smacked it! And that baby blew open! And it looks kinda like a fruit gusher, so um, please let me know in the comments if I can eat these or not. Thank you, bye. I'm a Canadian and this is my Canadian passport and this is my Canadian passport picture. Uh, and for some reason, I'm in the freaking United States during the season finale of America. Cause I'm stupid and I just really wanted some good American fast food. Anyways, I was trying to escape before it becomes the newest Purge movie. So I packed up my Jojo Siwa poster, my Rainy Rodriguez shrine, and my favorite toilet seat. And I left my room for the very last time and walked over to the bus station to go back to Canada. And as I was sitting on that bus, I remembered I forgot my passport on my desk while filming this TikTok. So I freaked out and I got off the bus and I ran back to my place faster than Zoe Laverne is running from the federal authorities. And once I grabbed it, I then called an Uber back to Canada and it was $4,000, but I booked it since I missed the bus. Anyways, the Uber arrived, so I went downstairs, and I got in, and the guy was chill until he turned to me and said, is it just you? And I said, why? And he said, I ain't never seen two pretty best no! friends. My friend's dog looked like a dust bunny. So we took him to the groomers and got him shaved. And now he looks like a little puffy cloud and he's so cute, even though he kind of looks like a human in a dog suit, like that one meme of that dog. Anyways, when we got home, we were cuddling, but then I noticed that he was digging for something in the beanbag chair. And I was like so confused. Like, was he trying to make bread? But then I noticed there was smoke coming from the beanbag chair seams. At first, I thought I tipped over one of the hundreds of unattended candles I have lit at all times. But the chair like wasn't warm or anything. So I unzipped it more and I was engulfed in a cloud of smoke and I blacked out. When I woke up, it was like I had gone through a poor and I was in some alternate reality where terrible world events such as Dance Monkey was never released. And the bat with COVID-19 ran into a glass window. I was loving this new world until I walked into my Minecraft-themed bedroom and realized in this universe, Minecraft doesn't exist. I fell to my knees and screamed until I woke up next to the beanbag and I looked inside to realize that the smoke was actually just fungal spores from a moldy chicken nugget. So I've always wondered, what would happen if you put a Tide Pod in your dishwasher instead of, like, the dish soap pod thing? Like, would it explode, or, like, what would happen? So today, I decided to sacrifice my Android phone to record it. And I turned the flash on and put it in my dishwasher. And then once it was recording inside there, I closed it up and started the dishwasher on the low cycle. But after a few minutes, it started shaking a lot. And I noticed that there was water leaking and dripping out the bottom. So I panicked, and I canceled it, and I opened it up. And I took the phone out, and somehow it survived and was still working. So I played the video to see what happened, and... Every time you're not running, and cheering gets closer. I was getting my teeth fixed today, cause last week I tried one of those bang energy drinks that all those TikTokers promote, and it tasted like urine and made my teeth fall out. Anyways, as I was sitting there, I accidentally popped out the ushy gushy thing that was sitting at the back of my throat, and it fell on the floor, so I picked it up off the ground and popped it back in without wiping it off or anything. But then when I got home, I felt something sharp in my mouth and noticed I had a fingernail glued to my tooth, and I flipped my shit. I was so grossed out and I tried ripping it off, but it was stuck on. And then I tried using a fork to scrape it off, but that didn't work. And then I tried playing dentist and all I did was knock out another other two. And then I realized I need something powerful to get it off. So I walked over to the local power plant near me to try and zap it off. And I climbed up a power line and bit down on it when zap. I woke up and I checked my lip and the fingernail was gone. And I was so happy. So I grabbed my phone and boom, a lightning bolt shocked me. And that's when I realized the power line had given me powers. And I was Mr. Electrodad. <laughs>
I was marking where I want my plastic surgeon to work on. So that I can look like Humpty Dumpty and someone will push me off a wall and put me on my misery. When in that moment, my doorbell rang in the middle of the night. So I ran downstairs and opened the door and saw there was a letter waiting for me. So I picked it up and I looked at it and it was inviting me to go to Vegas and get my face filled by someone named Dr. Phil. And I was like, is Alexa listening to me? Because how do they know I want that? And then I did the most logical thing and hopped in an Uber to the airport and got on a flight to Las Vegas. The lady next to me on the flight was dancing, but then she saw me recording her and it was really awkward. Anyways, I landed and I headed to the plastic surgeon's office and I had to walk down this really dark hallway and when I arrived, I let myself in. I was walking through the office looking for the plastic surgeon when out from behind a curtain emerged the Dr. Phil. He was breathing really heavily and I asked him if he was a real doctor and then he looked angered and then he started chasing me and I ran as fast as I could jumping over furniture to escape him because I didn't want Dr. Phil to fill my face. Ah! I was preparing my favorite salad made of lawn and croutons when all of a sudden I got a tweet notification on my Stan account dedicated to Aiden Gallagher. You know the guy who does the... I threw out the salad and grabbed my laptop to see that the Aiden Gallagher was going on Omegle to talk to his fans. I felt so excited because there's no one more comforting and down-to-earth and vibrant than Mr. Loud Bilo. I needed to be prepared just in case I did actually get to talk to him, so I grabbed my keys, hopped in the car, and drove to the store. And I ordered some bread to please the Loaf King. As I was purchasing my loaf, I realized the joke is kind of dead, but maybe, just maybe, it'll be enough for him to notice me. I drove home, opened my computer, and hopped on Omegle. I saw a lot of very terrifying things that will probably give me trauma for years and i was just about to give up when oh my god oh my god oh my god ah, word of time but if you want to see if i met the real life loaf boy the link to these two videos in my bio so i keep seeing people get canceled and i thought it's only a matter of time before i get canceled because i've said the n in autumn or the word column or the word damn is so useless like what's the point of silent letters you know what should be silent people who are racist transphobic and homophobic man are you filming a serious video so, okay, um... When you have a platform, you have a responsibility to not spread or normalize things that can potentially hurt people. It's not like people are more sensitive these days. People are just no longer tolerating words or actions that have always hurt them. If I could motivate you guys to do one thing, it would be to educate yourself on issues that you may never face in your life, but other people unfortunately have to live with every single day, depending on who they are, who they love, who they pray to, or a number of other factors. Now, I do believe that when people make a mistake, tearing them apart and bullying them is such a wasted opportunity when you can show them and especially others how they can be a better person and learn from their mistakes at the end of the day please just be kind to every person that you meet have a good day me and my 80 year old neighbor myrtle have been leaving each other messages through our windows to stay entertained during quarantine that's until yesterday when she wrote a very threatening sign I know she's an old lady, but that made my anxiety go ding, 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 ding. When I went downstairs, the door was open, like she said, and there was a box. But then my ADHD distracted me, and I started thinking, why did Marty Rich name the song The Box? Is he, like, just rapping about a box that he order? Snap out of it, Ben. You potentially have an elderly intruder in your house. She could, like, bite me with her dentures or something and give me corona. I took the box and screamed, leave me alone, Myrtle, and then went to go make my final sign. I placed it in my window where I knew she would see it. Here's a fun Ben fact. I'm an expert in archery, and I'm not afraid to turn her into Myrtle on a stick. I felt prepared, but all I could do now was wait around for for Myrtle to make her move, but I got curious and decided to check out the box. It could have been booby trapped, ha, <laughs> booby, for all I know, but I opened it anyways, and it turns out it was cookies. She baked me cookies. Hi, here are some things from elementary school that you definitely forgot existed. I think these things were called pennies, but they smell like penis because they were never washed. Everyone who did this to their erasers are in jail now. These would always take me at least an hour to do, but the person sitting next to me had it done in a minute flat. These chairs right here were so staticky, they had a longer battery life than an iPhone 10. You have not known pain until you've run your finger over with one of these. I love ripping hairs off my lice-infested head and burning them over top of a bath and body works candle because i'm so bored from quarantine because unlike some people cough cough no literally cough cough i haven't been going to social gatherings and i've been staying home letting random things on fire to pass the time but anyways i looked down and realized the two and a half muscles i used to have are all gone and now my pants are even tighter and that is so completely normal and all right did you think i was gonna get mad at myself this year is such an l that the alphabet ends after l there's no mnop anyways i still felt like a human blobfish i needed a self-esteem booster baby so i did three sit-ups and waited for the apps to come and i waited like 10 minutes and they still weren't there but i forced myself to take some shirtless pictures and then i was gonna post them on instagram but then i got scared and deleted them because i have a huge fear of my nipples being on the internet but then i said yolo and posted them so if you want to see them my instagram is ben of the week <laughs> i was giving palm trees high fives because like our hands are palms and palm trees are palms 
palms. So what if every time we pass one, we're leaving it hanging because its palms are out and it's expecting a high five and it gets sad and it drops all its coconuts and one falls on an elderly person. Uh, anyways, I got home and saw that I had some weird goo on my hand from touching all the trees and I couldn't wash it off or scrape it off and like hand sanitizer wouldn't even dissolve it. And I was so confused what it was. And that's when I realized it's a squished ant. But it kind of smelled like go-go squeeze applesauce. So I took a lick of it and- Let me tell you, these spicy boys hurt. So now I was addicted to ants. And every single day after that moment, I would take a straw to the cracks of every sidewalk in my neighborhood, sucking up ants. And they are pure protein. So I became so strong. And I was so powerful. My muscles became so big. Next week, I'll be doing my first UFC fight. Wish me luck. Remember on Vine when people would get injured and then go viral for no reason? Well, I could be the first person on TikTok. So that put me in a coma for about 50 years. And the first thing I did when I woke up was check if the TikTok of me getting hit by a car went viral. But I found out the TikTok was no more. It was replaced by Vine 2000. Anyways, I was feeling hungry and super skinny after not eating for five decades. So I checked what was in the fridge. There was some pizza with mold on it, but mold just adds extra flavor. So I ate it. After my mold meal, I decided to wander around the empty wasteland. I was skating around, but then started to feel lonely because humans went extinct from COVID-70. But then I realized this is the future. I'm sure they have time travel. I said, hey Siri, do you have time travel? And she was like, yes, yeah, stupid, it's the future. What day do you want to go to? And I decided to go to a date that would change history. November 13th. I teleported into a Walmart and went to go look for the Gummy Bear album. I looked on every shelf, but I was a year too early. I told Siri, Pass me the rock. Take my dribble up. Today I woke up sad and single for the 7,347th day of my life. As I got up to drink my water bottle full of stale Red Bull, I thought, no, this ends today. Okay, here goes nothing. Dear Zendaya, you don't know me, but I love you. This is my formal marriage proposal to you. April Fool's was yesterday, so I'm dead serious. I would love to marry you on the set of Shake It Up, but the set's actually on top of a boat in the middle of Fiji. And I've invited every Disney Channel icon. Look, there's Bertram from Jesse sitting next to Bob Duncan from Good Luck Charlie. Oh, and there's Mr. Mosby from The Sweet Life. Wait, why is everyone in the audience a bald man? Anyways, I invited Bella Thorne, but she couldn't make it because they stopped her at the airport because she was trying to smuggle drugs. Anyways, I truly believe you were the most beautiful woman on the planet. If I could describe how you make me feel, it's like when you see a hydraulic press video and they squish a piece of soap and it becomes little soap noodles in the air. Now, my net worth is $3 and a half used Subway gift card, so I made my own little soap noodle ring just for you. So, Zendaya, will you be my wife? Guys, please send this to her. If she sees this, I will scream. So I'm scrolling through Twitter and I see that Justin Bieber was diagnosed with Lyme disease. Immediately, I roll up my sleeve and ask the tick that's been sucking my blood for the past five days that I picked up in Zimbabwe if he's gonna give me Lyme disease. Are you gonna give me Lyme disease? No, nah, bro, you're good. I'm clean. Feeling relieved, I go back to bed. Wait, I do have lemon disease, though. Lemon disease? What? <laughs> Do y'all remember that trend where people would draw their entire life story? Well, I'm gonna be the first TikToker to do it. Hi, I'm Ben, and I was born at zero years old in Edmonton, Canada. Right when I was born, my parents and I moved from Canada to Massachusetts, United States. And my mom would take me to the beach a lot to collect rocks until one day a nuclear reactor almost melted down, so we stopped going there. When I started school, I was low-key really big-brained, and I was such a smart cookie that they put me in the smart kids class. That was until I found out that smart kid class is seven hours a day, not three hours like preschool was. So I literally ran out of the classroom to escape, and when the teacher caught me, I kicked her in the thigh and gave her a permanent bruise. So I feel bad about that. Anyways, I got a dog named Kobe and I love her so much. I can't draw her. So here's her on the table. The middle school I went to was really, yeah! And I was the only brown kid there. So I got bullied. Oh crap, I'm out of time. If you want to see more about that and how I was an exchange student in Japan and my girlfriend, the link to the YouTube video is in my bio. I squeezed a whole bottle of lotion on my hands because they were as dry as my cat's ashes. And also, I wanted my hands to be soft for the date that I was going on today. I was late, so I ran upstairs, turned on the security system, and I was about to head out the door when I couldn't turn the knob. My hands were so lusciously moist from the moisturizer that they were just slipping and sliding off the knob. And I started freaking out because my security alarm would call the authorities if I didn't get out in 30 seconds. So I tried drying them off by rubbing them on my pants, but they still didn't have any grip. So I tried putting them in rice, and they were still too slippery. And then I looked at the security system, and I just Three seconds left, so I fell to the ground crying, not knowing what to do. Until I remembered the driest thing in my house. Mm, my cat's ashes. I grabbed the urn and covered my hands in the dust, and I headed for the doorknob, and luckily it worked. I turned it, opened it, and... Yeah. Valentine's Day is in exactly one month. And I'm not letting you be sad and single like me. So, I made a list of three ways you can easily get a bang. The first and best method is to search up their Spotify or Apple Music. And look at what their top songs are. And then you can take their top songs and put it on your story and pretend like you have the same music taste. Then they'll see it and you can tell them, Why, yes, I love a pilot's license by Olivia Mosquito. The second method is to buy a billboard asking your crush out. But that's kind of expensive. So, finally, the third method is to post TikToks in front of your house. Making sure the street sign is visible in the background. Then when you get home, I 
might just like to leave the door unlocked and post things that would really attract some new friends. This will invite plenty of new people to come to your house and meet you. Like, there's this mysterious hooded figure that took all my stuff yesterday. I considered it a Valentine's gift from me to them. And I think we might have a spark between us. I woke up in the middle of the night wanting a Travis Scott burger. So I drove over to McDonald's to get one and I ordered it. Do you have the Travis Scott burger? Oh yeah, we do. But then after I ordered it, I pulled up to the window and they shoved a Q-tip in my nose. And that's when I realized I had sleep driven to a COVID testing site. And then she handed me a sheet of paper that told me I was positive for thick butt cheek syndrome. My tires popped from the weight of my behind. And when I managed to squeeze out of the car, I looked and saw how bad my big badonkadonk was. If I were to do the WAP dance right now in this street, the gravitational force would pull the sun so detrimentally close to the earth that everything would catch on fire and the earth would split in half. So I drove home and I went inside and hid in my basement so I could never cause an apocalypse. But I was missing something. I still never got my Travis Scott burger. So I grabbed some candles and I began a ritual to summon Travis Scott himself. I said out loud, Travis Scott! Are the candles burning, my lord? And then all of a sudden, he appeared out of thin air and said two words. It's lit! Can you imagine if TikTok actually did get banned? Like how boring life would be? You'd be walking your dog when someone drives by playing Say So by Doja Cat and you do the dance only to remember a time of laughter and fun and you fall to the ground in tears and you let go of your dog's leash and she runs away. So now you've got no dog. And you try to make yourself feel better by looking at some dogs on TikTok, but you can't because it doesn't exist. <laughs> Since there's nothing left for you, you decide to join the Amish colony near you and you churn butter and farm onions for the rest of your life until one day they catch you playing Animal Crossing on a Nintendo Switch and excommunicate you from the colony. You barely make it out of there with your onion collection and you run off into a field in the middle of nowhere and okay I don't know how to finish this, but I just want to say if tiktok does get banned I'm forever grateful for your support. <laughs> I won't be going anywhere because I post every saturday on youtube and i'm super active on instagram So if you enjoy my videos, uh, please, please, please go follow me on those platforms. It means a lot. Love you this right here is my birth certificate. Yup, I left my birth certificate in my pocket and it went through the washing machine. I found it while doing laundry and it was shriveled up like a little pecan. So the first thing I did besides completely panic was I tried putting it in the oven to get the water out. But then my whole house filled with smoke and now it's a burnt little turd nugget. Now everyone loses things, things happen. I've washed my passport before, I've lost my wallet. I've microwaved my own credit card to see if it would turn into a potato chip, it did. My grandpa lost me in a parking lot when I was 10 and a strange man tried to abduct me and sell me for two goats on the black market in Zimbabwe, it's whatever. But what do you do when you literally destroy your birth certificate? Am I supposed to crawl right back into the womb and pop out and be like, wah, wah. Give me a birth certificate now. If you Google how to get another birth certificate, it just says you were the world's biggest idiot. So I've decided I have to make a new identity. I try to think of it less as illegally photoshopping a birth certificate and more like creating a new sim. I printed it off and I'm excited to share that I am now Aria Nagrande. I think it looks super professional and no one will think that it's fake. So I was trying to buy a tiger online so that my dog could have a little friend to play with. And I I found one for five dollars. I thought in my head, this is such a great deal. It sounds so legitimate. The dude selling it was named Barbara, and he sent me a picture of a shipping container with his address and saying, Make me hair, winker face. I was like, uh, what a welcoming and sweet dude. I told Barbara, okay. And I went outside and hopped to my car, looked at my reflection and scared myself, put my seatbelt on, of course, and then drove eight hours to go to his container house. I only crashed into one lane. <laughs> When I got there, I could hear circus music playing from the inside. I got out of my car and slowly approached the container. It kind of smelled like something rotting, but I really wanted my $5 tiger. I was about to go in, but guys, come on. Do you really think I'd do that? We have to social distance. So I'm waiting until after the pandemic to meet up with an unknown man named Barbara to buy a tiger from him for $5. So my hair used to look like this. And today I got my first haircut in six months. That's not including cutting it whenever I had a mental breakdown during quarantine, wrapped myself in a garbage bag and chopped it all off. Anyways, I wanted to shave my head and look like Avatar The Last Airbender. So I got my Uber and headed to my hairdresser's studio. I had to put on a robe so the hair doesn't get down your back, but I put it backwards because I'm stupid. And then this little fur baby walked up to me and gave Matzo's kisses. And well, I got too nervous to ask him for the Avatar haircut, so I told him to just give me whatever would look best. So here's my new hairstyle. It's like a mix of space buns and linguini noodle bangs. I'm just kidding. Apparently that's how they part it when they cut it. Anyways, and then I had to go sit in the dome chair thing and then the haircut was complete. And I was too nervous to look, so I kept a hat on until I went home. And then when I got home, I went into my bathroom, I took off my hoodie, and then I took off my hat, and if you want to see the haircut reveal, I just posted on my Instagram, and I kind of hate it, so please hype me up. <laughs> Today, I gave myself a terrible haircut, because my hair had the wingspan of a pterodactyl. Before it started, I needed to get prepared, so I put a garbage bag on myself to keep the hair off, but <laughs> I realized I looked like a spawn of Lucifer, and I couldn't stop cry laughing. But then I parted my hair and started cutting. I didn't want to see the damage I was doing, so I didn't look, and I cut it as if Helen Keller was giving herself a haircut. I accidentally cut off too much, and I thought it was bad enough until the scissors started getting stuck. 
stuck in my hair, and then I got it out, and then the scissors got stuck again. At this point, I'd pulled out more hair than I had cut, and I looked like an egg, so I decided to just give up and take the clips out. And when I pulled them out, I looked like an Oompa Loompa. I did cut a lot of hair, but I kind of liked how it turned out until I realized I missed a spot. And then I just started cutting pieces for fun, and then I cut too much off, and <laughs> dang it, we're out of time. And if you want to see what happened, the video is on my channel, and the link is in my bio. So I was on the phone with 911 because I'd made some banana soup with a hint of ranch dressing, and I'd left the gas burner on. And I was scared my house would blow up. So I said, please help. And the operator was like, it's going to be okay. We're on our way. And me being so star for human interaction replied, okay, <laughs> I'll see you soon. <laughs> and I began to prepare for my date with the emergency services person. I dimmed the lights to set the mood. And then I set the table and put out the banana soup I'd cooked earlier and poured some fancy juice de orange. I changed out of my depression fit into something slightly less depressing and attempted to fix my hair, but I ended up wanting to cut it all off and had a mental breakdown. But I was like, mm, another day. <laughs> Suddenly I heard the doorbell ring. I got up and ran over to let them in, but I was so excited that I didn't see the charger on the floor. I forgot there was gas in my house and I tripped over and it created a spark. And next thing you know, um... I was so bored today, I googled myself, and I noticed there was a tab saying Ben of the Week height, and it said that I was 5'7", which is slander because I'm 6 feet tall. Look, I literally measured it. I am 6 feet tall! Like, I can drop my phone with a Caseify case for my head, and it survives. Not only did my phone survive with my Caseify case, but the case is super fun, too. They have lots of different designs, which are super fun. And, like, look, here's Dula Peep with hers. Look at me, my twin, Dula Peep. But I have this fun shipping label one, which I tried putting in a mailbox once, but then I realized it's not a real shipping label, it's just a case, and I had to fish my phone out of the mailbox with tongs. Anyways! I highly recommend getting one since I see some of y'all raw dogging that iPhone with no protection, no case, no nothing. And they come in super fun packaging and have free little sanitizing wipes for you stinky mamas. Anyways, you can get 20% off with code 20 high Ben. Okay, bye! Hey there, what's up? Just wanted to quickly remind you today to drink some water and DO NOT SAY the water tastes disgusting. It's water, you idiot. It doesn't have a taste! There's a reason why your forehead looks like the topographical map of Utah, and that's because you don't drink water! Oh, are you a little baby who needs a little baby bottle of juice? No, you idiot. Drink the freaking earth juice.